that they've assembled these first round playoff games. Sports Radio. Miami Fort Lauderdale presents the Neil Rogers Show. Call 5670560. Toll free for David Brown. Call 560 on your cell phone. The opinions of Neil, his guests, callers, or anyone else on the show do not necessarily reflect those of WQAM, Beasley Read Acquisitions, or the Beasley Broadcast. Now, Neil Rogers on Sports Radio 560 QAM. Play off, huh? Play off this. Oh! Man, Tom, I'm so distracted lately. Why's that? There's so many hot women around, I can't stop looking and fantasizing about them. Well, try this. What's that? Ridner, a new drug guaranteed to help you forget your fantasies and refocus your energy. Oh, excellent. Give it here. Hmm? Ridner's great. Now watch. What do you think about the new sales girl, Julie? Ridner. That's right. It works. How about that chick at the gym you're always talking about? Ridner. It's doing its job. The girl at the post office? Ridner. Yep. Oh, look, here comes my wife. Janet. Ridner. What? I, I mean, uh, Ridner. I heard what you said. That better be the drugs talking. Ridner is neither endorsed, recommended, or even acknowledged by the FDA. 7.7. Oh, he's killing me. I'm gonna slash my wrist. Yes. Hey, so what's going on here? Anything new and exciting? No. Same old crap, I guess, huh? Boy, what is with the levels on this thing? Really strange, and the overhead's a little bit peculiar, and I noticed somebody short must have been sitting in this chair last week. I didn't adjust the chair. Huh? I feel like I'm sitting in a high chair, just like the PD. Oh, wait, like I said, I did adjust the chair. Who I noticed is conspicuous by his absence again today. Uh-huh. We just came back from vacation. Uh-huh. But hey, that's the way it works around here. So anything new going on, like I said? No. Here's our poll. By the way, Beasley's eight. We don't we don't have a jingle that's his eight. So the best we could, the closest we could come was uh, that one with seven point seven. Seven point seven. That's as close as we had. I'm gonna slash my wrist. Rectum. Of course, it could be, and we do realize it could be 7.7 before the day is out. Uh-huh. So we'll keep our eye closely glued on that. I'm sure. I'm sure that uh, Eric's got his finger on it right now. Anyway, our poll question that we changed over the weekend on our website, neilrogers.com, for obvious reasons. Do you think the amount of force used to extract Alien was appropriate or excessive? We had 520 votes. 447 said appropriate, 86%. Only 73, 14% said it was excessive. Obviously, emotional cripples who don't understand that when there are people holding somebody hostage, which amounted to a kidnapping, that you have to go in there and use some force and when in doubt, even on better late than ever, Janet. Nice going, sweetheart. So you do understand that the continent of Europe, other than England, where they're like a little bit behind the time, they're only five hours ahead, but the rest of Europe is six hours ahead. So we go to lunch at McDonald's in Amsterdam on Saturday. It's about (coughs) 11.15. Saunter back to the hotel. Now it's uh, a little before noon which would have made it a little before 6 o'clock in the morning here. Following this, uh-huh. turn on the TV in my room, and there is CNN. And I see on my screen all of this stuff unfolding, which had just happened about a half hour before, and I went, oh! Yeah! Nice going, Janet. Better late than ever, sweetheart. It was just like being home. It was kind of like a little practice for being home already a couple of days ahead of time. Same old, tired, neurotic stuff. Media continuing to pr- 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 pretend to you that this is a very important story. You see, I know that a lot of you won't like hearing this, but it's true. And that is that your brain is manipulated by the media. Although the one good poll that I see, the best poll of all of them, is about did the media do a good uh, job covering this story? 66%, two-thirds no. said, no. No. no, no way, they stunk the joint out. Embarrassing, pathetic, and that's true. That's absolutely correct. But nevertheless, like I've told you many times in the past, and as usual, i got my thumb right on it, When the media decides that a story is important, they're going to bombard you with it until you decide, hey, you know something, this must be important, Uh, they must be right. And so we're just going to talk about that until we're blue in the face, until we can't talk no more. It's not an important story. It's an immigration story, it's a child custody story, it's a lot of things, but it's not like the end of the world. And as far as the neurotic, repetitive, tired, old, stale crap that we've been subjected to in this town day after day, month after month, year after year, we are so tired of it, we got it coming out of our ears already. We got Castroitis coming out of our Rectum. ass. Old and stale. Get a new goddamn song, okay? Get a life. Get a new hobby. 
Evidently, Domino's isn't getting the job done. Check with the old Jews. I think Mahjong's still pretty popular. Do something. Besides this incessant crap. But you know something? Something valuable did happen for me during this period of time, besides having a great time in Amsterdam, of course. Of course. Uh-huh. Right. I may, have to, I may actually have to put my thing in a sling for a few days. But at any rate... The great thing was I woke up in the middle of the night, 3 o'clock in the morning of their time, which is 9 o'clock in the evening this time here. Flip on my TV to get the hockey scores, of course, see what's going on. Nice going, Leafs, by the way. Oh. What happened to those Panthers? Are they still playing? No. Going to play any more of those? No. But at any rate, so I flip on the TV. It was uh, maybe Wednesday, Thursday night, and here's your favorite friend. Only $50. Because it's 9 o'clock at night, carried live all over the world. And who's the guest tonight for the entire hour? Tonight. It's the vice president and tipper, that obnoxious tipper gore. And you know something? Something very valuable happened to me. Because I decided, even though I have this voter registration card in my wallet for the first time in years that I was planning on voting, am I going to vote? No. Absolutely not. I wouldn't vote for you, Al Gore, if you paid me $50,000. I mean, George W. is out of the question. And this is why the majority of the public continue to try to express to the, uh, to, to the powers that be these aren't the people that we want. Give us a different choice. Give us somebody. That's why Bradley offered a little bit of hope for about five minutes until we realized how boring he was. That's why John McCain offered a little bit of hope until we found out he was full of crap. How do you like his thing about South Carolina and the Confederate flag, by the way? Oh, well, I, it. I just did that for politics. Yeah. I'm sorry I did that. See, now that he's out of the running, now he can admit, oh, well, I was just political grandstanding, pandering to those rednecks in South Carolina, and it was wrong and I shouldn't have done it. Like we're going to give him credit for admitting that now? But Al Gore, your responses, and even Larry with all those softballs, uh -huh. you know, he pressed him on the thing three or four times about the Ileon business. His response, he, he keeps giving a non-response. Even after what happened Saturday, he continues giving a non-response. Oh, well, it should have been handled in the family courts and, uh, you know, uh, whatever is best for the child. And sometimes the father gets custody, but then there are times when he doesn't. But a beep, but a boop, he doesn't say anything. And as I sat there watching the entire hour up till 4 o'clock in the morning, Europe time, I realized this man doesn't deserve my vote or any of yours either. Neither of these candidates. In fact, starting today, I'm going to encourage what I've done in the past. So at times, don't vote. See, some people out there say, oh, gee, that's a terrible thing to say. You're supposed... No, I'm not supposed to give you a bunch of bull crap, politically correct BS. George W. Bush and Al Gore, between the two of them, do they deserve our vote? No. Do they deserve the effort to get off your ass and go and vote in November? No. You bet your sweet ass they don't. Just like the poor people up there in New York State with Rudy Giuliani. And by the way, talk about the pot calling the kettle black. This is even worse than Maris Greasius with her allegations of fake pictures, who ought to be an expert on fake and contrived pictures with that videotape they made loud uh, two weeks ago. Uh -huh. Yeah. The one that people all over the world are laughing at. And here's Rudy Giuliani talking about stormtroopers breaking into the house. Does he know about stormtroopers? There's the expert. But my point being, those poor bastards up in New York State, now they've got a choice between two people they can't stand. So every expert tells you, and they're absolutely correct, it's going to be who's going to lose it. Not who's going to win it. Who's going to be most obnoxious and who will they detest the most? And at the moment, Rudy is winning that pretty handily. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. They can't stand him. They don't like her, that bitch, but they can't stand him. That fascist, disgusting, jack-booted piece of turd. Anyway, so what are we going to talk about today? Nine minutes after 10 at 560 WQAM, Seminole Indian Casino of Hollywood is the place to plunge your lungs in South Florida. Even better than play gas may be reproduced without the express written permission of WQAM Beasley Reed Acquisition Corp. Neil Rogers got.
560 WQM. I have only one thing to sum up my feelings about what happened Saturday morning. Nice going, Janet. Oh. Better late than ever. Just like El Presidente said this morning, I agree with him. I concur wholeheartedly. I have no problem with anything that happened. There wasn't excessive violence. And if you listen to all the experts over the weekend, the FBI people, the INS people, this is the way these operations are done. And I hate to break the news to Governor Bob Graham, who, I mean, you know something, politicians, most of them, there are a few exceptions, there's some I like, I like Ted Kennedy when he's sober, which isn't very often, I like Chris Dodd from uh, Connecticut, but not too many of them, most of our assholes, exploiters, liars, Bob Graham, you're a jackass, man, you're pathetic, you're subhuman scum, oh, he was personally promised by El President it wouldn't happen during the nighttime hours. Has anybody ever heard of anything so ridiculous in their lives? No, let's wait until noon on any given day when there's at least 1, 1,500 of these crazy hysterical protesters massed there in front of that house. Let's wait until noon, you idiot. Of course they were going to do it at 5 o'clock in the morning. And, of course, uh, you know, with, uh, with everybody's luck, the AP photographer gets in there and takes that one picture. Really fascinating to see the two front pages in yesterday morning's newspapers, and this time to give you a, di a different perspective. Here's the mind. Well, first, the Sun Sentinel. I will say this the Sun Sentinel inside does have a special alien section. And there's that huge photo from the AP photographer of the uh, INS guy with the uh, machine gun. Not pointed at anybody's head, by the way, and also with his finger very clearly not on the trigger. And also on the Herald this morning, they finally point out that, well, guess what? They did realize that there were people, at least one person with a gun in the home. Not to mention how many people outside there. And, of course, guns in Miami? What a concept, huh? You don't just send your people in there naked, just like uh, Sonny said in The Godfather. He's not uh, sending his brother into that bathroom. We're coming out with just his in his hand, okay? But here's the front page of yesterday's Sun Sentinel. Dad and Elion reunited. Now, on the left, it shows the, uh, the woman, INS agent, taking the kid out. He's uh, crying and uh, bewildered, of course, and hysterical. But on the right, here's the picture, the now famous... Oh, it's the phony picture. I forgot, Maris Crazy Ass. It's the phony picture. Does anybody believe it's Dr. No. Phony? No. Does his hair look the same as it did in the other picture? Yes. yes. The, the only difference in the hair is like the, 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 it's a, the color print. That's always a cheap brownie camera. Ask Jason. He'll tell you he probably took over his brownie on camera. But other than that, it looks like the same guy didn't hear to me. How could you doctor a picture like that, you crazy bitch? But at any rate, here's the uh, headline, Dad and Elion reunited. Agency's child and flew him to suburban Washington, D.C., where his father regained custody. And the kid, by the way, looks extraordinarily happy to me. And also, thank God, is not being paraded in front of the cameras like a circus animal like he has been for the past five months. For the fun and profit of crazy Cuban organizations and individuals in this town. This kid has been held hostage. He's been kidnapped. Once they, once they revoked the custody, from that point on, it was the equivalent of a kidnapping. So what happened on Saturday was a rescue mission. Not some horrendous, grotesque uh, government action. But, of course, here's the Miami Herald front page from yesterday. Here is the front, the AP picture right there in the front page, gun pointed. And there's the fisherman. We'll get to him in a minute. We'll take plenty of time on the crazy fisherman. In the closet with Alien. You think there's something symbolic about that? Uh -huh. The fisherman, Donato Dalrymple, he's in a closet. And there's a crying Maris crazy ass. But the headline in huge letters says, Seized! Raid returns Alien to father. You see, just a little bit of difference there. Uh -huh. Just a little tad yeah. of difference between the Sun Sentinel, which has throughout this whole deal been uh, relatively uh, pretty good. And the hysterical pandering herald. They had that jackass Tom Fiedler on last night on CNN. You know, the one with the rubber raincoat that was busy chasing around Guy, uh, Gary Hart and Donna Rice? That Tom Fiedler? Uh -huh. What a pathetic performance. Tragic. You're not fooling anybody, Tom. The only Tom that wrote anything that made any sense yesterday was my good friend Tom Jicka. Did you see his column about the media coverage? We'll get to that. A lot of stuff to get to. Maybe even a few calls today. You see, I hate to break the news to you, but if these people really cared about the kid, if they really wanted to compromise, if they really were serious negotiate, see, there was nothing more to negotiate. Negotiating doesn't mean that you agree to a bunch of points, and then when push comes to shove, every time it comes to, to the last thing about to, to turning over custody, you say, no, that's not negotiating. 
So people like Lincoln Diaz Bullard and Jorge Maso Menos and all these other uh, fakers that are trying to give you a song to dance about, oh, the negotiations were still going on in good faith, and the government never had any intention. The government had every intention and had every ample opportunity before to seize the child. They didn't want to do it that way. If the government had no intention of negotiating, you don't have the attorney general on the phone until 4 o'clock in the goddamn morning when she could have been doing her girlfriend or whatever she might have been doing. That's right. Something worthwhile. So anybody who believes these grave robberies, these axe murderers down there, it's very clear. In fact, even our close personal friend who don't speak to us anymore, the other fisherman, Sam Ciancio, finally is speaking out now, and I'll take credit for that, for finally butching him up. He says, who had the power to stop this, huh? The family in Miami, the ball was in their court, but they chose not to. They invited the marshals to come into the house. Nice going, Sam. Who also says, by the way, my cousin Donato is a monkey. He's only doing this to get his face on camera. Donato Dalrymple is using a six-year-old child, says Sam Ciencio, one of the fishermen who rescued Elian. Our poll question today is, by the way, who's the biggest asshole? Lazaro Gonzalez, Maris Lacius Gonzalez, or Donato Dalrymple, the fisherman? Better put the fisherman in parentheses there, because most people don't know him by name. But once you say the fisherman, they'll know exactly uh -huh. which asshole we're talking about. Which of those three do you think is the biggest asshole, okay? I vote for Donato, hands down, man. And I want to apologize right here on the air today to Cato Kalin. Because I had compared, before I went away on vacation, I compared this guy. I said he was the Cato Kalin of the Alien case. I apologize, Cato, because you're a little twerpy asshole, but you're not in the same league with this guy. Crying all the words they were using, words that I never used in my life, the words again. Yeah, the words they were using. Like, get the F out of the way or, uh, or else. And where's the F and kid? And that's it. That's the way those operations are done. Quickly, dramatically, like we're not taking any crap, get out of the way, give us what we want, and bingo, that's it. Nice job, very well done. And within just a matter of hours, he was back with Daddy, Daddy holding the kid in his arms. There's no more media circus going on. Even those poor bastards, George was telling me this morning, he said the reason those people are hanging around in front of the house after the family was long gone and the kid, they got no other life. That's their life now. So for hours and hours, they're still milling in the streets. They're hanging around trying to beat up some guys from CNN or any uh, cameraman they could find to make themselves feel bitter about themselves. There are millions of people starving to death in Ethiopia including millions of children. Does anybody care about that? No. Is anybody here talking about that? No. Over in uh, uh, Robert Mugabe in Zimbabwe, I like the way that sounds, by the way, nice alliteration. He's, he's a crazy person now. In his so-called black, well, what's the word they use? Squatters. squatters. Just checking. His black squatters, they're squatting on it. That's right, on white-owned farmland. And if the farmers don't get the hell out, they're dead. They're butchering each other up. They're crazy people there. Crazy people. Does anybody care? No. Is anybody talking about that? No. So all this crap about, like, this six-year-old kid, like, everybody's so concerned about Alien. Like I told you before, he's the trophy. He's the symbol. He is the anti-Castroista. That's what he is. And, of course, in Mara's crazy ass's case, he's also the uh, lost puppy dog that she found and she ain't giving it back. And at a press conference yesterday, a not, a not so veiled comment for Jana Reno. Well, you know, Miss Reno, you're never going to have your own children. We know that. Which was just another way of saying, you miserable dyke you. That was what you... And how many kids you got, Mara's Gracious? Thank God, none. Thank God none. And you know something? The best thing we can do right now is fix her and add Gansa Mishpacha. Make sure that they get sterilized before they come back. And this is the same Maris Crazy Eyes, by the way, who back when they gave them the deadline of 2 o'clock on that fateful day that they were supposed to bring the kid to the airport and the government was going to fly the whole family, including Maris Crazy Eyes, up there to Washington to be reunited with the, uh, with the father and have this meeting. Oh, no, well, she can't fly because she's too ill. And better be, but, but you notice the stalkers, the minute that uh, this kid was out of the house, they were already planning to follow up there to Washington to stalk him up there. And she had no problem getting on that plane and sitting there with her head down. And who was on the plane? The same guy that was on in the closet. The fisherman oh! was on the plane. Who was having a tearful press conference yesterday? The fisherman. Oh, oh and I'm, a, I'm ashamed to be an American. Oh, my God, they came in like scrub to me. Wait till you hear this. 
Here's an article that I had missed. Thanks to a Lauren for faxing this to me. I'm not sure which day this was in the Sun Sentinel. And our good close friend Sam Ciancio, the other fisherman that rescued this kid, says, We won't be breaking bread again of him and his cousin. The father of two, an owner of a Fort Lauderdale roofing company. They no longer speak to each other. Wait till you hear this. When the two men traveled to Washington to meet Juan Miguel Gonzalez, Ciancio said they agreed the purpose of their trip was to see what kind of father he was. We wanted to know if he was a good father, what kind of man he was, Ciancio said. As we entered the room within three minutes, my cousin was crying at this man's feet, saying, No man in no country has the right to separate you from your son. Are you following this? What he said to this man, Juan Miguel Gonzalez, and what he's doing in Miami are two different things. He's a pimp. He's an exploiter. He's waiting for the book, the miniseries, the full-length feature movie. Are you fooling anybody who's not out? No. No, you're not fooling me. I'll tell you that. Fifty years for overacting. Fifty years minimum. He makes Maris Gracias look like a piker. I'll tell you that. She, no, seriously. She's not in the same league with him. Even with all her histrionics and the tears, she's squirting them all over squirt, the goddamn squirt. place. Yeah, she's squirting them. She's not in a league with this guy. The fisherman. I mean, seriously, when you step back from this whole thing, and now that the kid is back with the father, and the father, and the father can't take him back to Cuba or anyplace else because you've already got the Justice Department issued their thing, and the, uh, the uh, uh, court, the circuit court, also issued their restraining order to re prevent him from leaving the country, which allegedly is what they wanted in the first place. Isn't that supposed to be what it was all about? Uh -huh. No, that's not what they wanted. They want to keep their trophy, and you ain't getting them. We got them, and you ain't getting them. Within, within three, four hours, they were already making their reservations to hop aboard that plane. All of this very well-financed business that's going on, including the $2 million that was offered by Lazaro Gonzalez to the father to hand over the child and let them keep the kid. $2 million, like it was some kind of a, uh, a, an item, an object to be bought. So that's if he stayed in the country. Yeah. With the kid. Well, yeah, but where did the $2 million come from? And the house and the car. And the big screen and the, job. and the big screen TV. You know, it's hot weather time and time to think about an important part of your house, your air conditioning system. So if you're thinking about installing a new AC unit, if you want a free second opinion on a price somebody else gave you, or no sé si ir al baño o darle cuerda a mi reloj. I am pleased that we've already taken drugs this morning. We do have a lot. We need more, and that's what this meeting and these announcements are about. We need to ask also, why aren't we doing drugs with other drugs? I remember more than 30 years ago, I was exposed to some of the greatest uh, drugs in the country. So I know firsthand from 30 years on my own behalf and watching experts. So I hope that all of us will see this as a beginning and that we will be even more committed to drugs. Thank you all very all much. Right. Nice shot, Eric Swilling. Speaking of that, by the way, they had the uh, governor of New Mexico, the Republican outgoing governor of New Mexico, which obviously he ended up for re-election to keep his mouth shut, who is uh, in favor of legalizing uh, marijuana and heroin, by the way. And he was on 60 Minutes last night. See, that's important stuff we ought to be talking about instead of having all these millions of people in jail in this country. Yeah, that's fascism. That's what that's all about. That's what people ought to be talking about, am I right? Uh -huh. But they're talking about alien, 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 on and on, like some kind of an illness, like some kind of a disease. It's a all alien all day, as in on MSNBC. See? 5670560, oh, pound 560 on the AT&T line. Out of town line is open, 877-785-6345. Here's an interesting fax. Neil, I really don't understand why you refuse to go on shows such as Nightline. You really tell it like it is, and your opinion should be heard nationwide. If people like Rene Acosta can get a national publicity over this, so can you. The answer is, I'm not looking for publicity. I'm here doing the Neil Rogers show. I've been offered, how many, how many calls did we have when this thing, well, before they finally did the seizure, before our vacation? Behind. At least. I would say we probably had at least yeah. 100 calls inviting uh, this one and that one and on this show, and the answer was consistently the same. No. No, because I'm not interested in those things. Am I going to make any money from that? No. No. Am I looking for publicity? No. No. I'm not a media whore. And by the way, speaking of media assholes, oh, Michelle Gillen, I'm telling you, when push comes to shove, they had a special breathless hour on Channel 4 News last night between 6 and 7 o'clock. 
And one of the featured commentators on there, and she was a commentator, not a reporter, just like Rick Sanchez, a commentator giving opinions, was Michelle Gillen, who was lending credibility to Maris Gracias' uh, suggestions that these pictures of the kid with a father with a smile on his face might actually have been faked. She's kind of lending credibility to it. And everybody in America with a brain is saying, yeah. yeah, just like the people who were believing that contrived videotape, just like the goddamn three judges, those cracker judges from the goddamn 11th Circuit Court of Appeals who issued that ruling, that 17-page ruling in which they said, among other ridiculous things, that, well, you know, the boy uh, has a right to apply for asylum, which he may have already done in that videotape. And when I read that in the International Herald Tribune, I immediately went, oh, my God. Kids half the age of Alien can see through that tape. Poppy, yo quiero, yo quiero Taco Bell, yo quiero Taco Bell. Whatever the hell he was saying on that thing. Looking off to the side, getting coached. How, what do you, how many times do you think they had to redo, reshoot that video? Behind. At least. Here's Hollywood. Hello. Hey, Daryl. I'm glad you had a good vacation. The best. I uh, want to make comment on the players in this, basically. First of all, the fishermen, along with the two mayors, are the biggest asses I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. Isn't, uh, it, isn't it interesting? It took the two mayors until 6 o'clock in the evening Saturday to finally hold a press conference and tell everybody to cut the crap and not uh, set any more fires in the recent... Until 6 o'clock in the evening, they finally got uh, the balls to open up a mouth. Exactly. Uh, Mayor Lacey, is whatever her name is, basically is, is an evil, bitter witch, from Bitch. what I can see, basically. Bitch. Absolutely. And let me tell you, um, for Rudy Giuliani... Uh, he's the biggest hypocrite. I don't think he's happy unless the black man gets killed, basically. That is correct. And now for the for basically the Cubans who are backing these guys are now going to be pawns of the Republican Party, basically. If they're so unhappy with being American now, just get on the boat and go right back to Cuba. And we'll pack them up maybe you know what you're in a And I'll and I'll right, saying thank God. Okay. All right. <laughs> five six seven oh five sixty. Bye bye Albert Gore. Bye bye Al. You're not getting my vote. Nobody's getting my vote. I'm doing the right thing. I'm staying the hell away again. You know, you know, when you go and you cast a vote, it's like saying, hey, I, I'm, I'm giving you my tangible support here. I believe that you're qualified to be the president. Is Al Gore qualified to be president? No. Is uh, George W. qualified? No. Of course not. Neither one. Neither of the above. No, thank you. I'll stay home. I'll play with myself. I'll play Parcheesi. I'll do something. I'll go out and demonstrate in front of the house. But I will absolutely, positively not lend my tangible support to lo two losers, two panderers like this. Good politician. There's America's number one oxymoron. Good politician. And as a matter of fact, you know something? When, that goes to show you why some of us are so unhappy that Bubba can't be in there another 20 or 30 years. He's heads and shoulders above, head and shoulders above the rest of them, especially the head part. Here's Miami. Hello. Ah uh, yes, hello. Yes, sir. Ah uh, yeah, I was just curious early, earlier to see what you're going to be saying about the, the situation, and just realize that your perspective is very predictable and very shallow. Uh huh. And uh, because I don't agree with you, does that make it very shallow no, and very predictable? It seems like you want everyone to agree with you that you, your word is the law, and you're still a no, kike. No, sir, I'm, I'm giving you're still my... a kike. Oh, I'm still a kike. Okay, thank you. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the AT and T wireless line. I guess that uh, tells us all we need to know uh -huh. about that call. Uh -huh. Thank you. Out of town line is open eight seven 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 eight five sixty three forty five. Just like that kike Janet Reno, ain't she Jewish? No. Oh, she must be. Here's a mobile in Palm Beach. Hello. Yeah, how you doing? Okay. Um, I noticed you said that Ileana was a trophy for the people down here in Miami. Yes, for the, for the so-called family and the politicians, right? Right, the politicians. Uh, is he going to be a trophy, you think, when he goes back to Cuba? I don't think he's going back to Cuba, at least not anytime soon. Well, I, I think it's inevitable he eventually will. But yeah. Well, think... Why do you say that? Well, do you think he'll be a trophy for Fidel when he gets back there? Probably. Okay. Is that is that right or wrong? Of course it's wrong. Okay. But but in the but in the meantime, if he's with his father, that that's the part that's right, and the father has okay. a right. The father has a right to decide to live where he wants to live. I don't I don't, uh, I don't disagree with that. Um, now, also, why do you think the president is so was so hard pressed about getting this kid back so soon? So soon? I so said getting back with his dad so soon. Well, what do you mean so soon? If dad dad had been here for almost well, three I, weeks. I, that's not my point. I'm saying why is he why is it so, so much importance to, for our president to reunite? An illegal first alien of, first of all, not, first of all, he's not, not an illegal alien. Number one, number two, the president didn't make the decision; he was consulted with it. And number three, get a life. 
Why was it so important to do it so soon? Yeah, what was the rush? Why couldn't they let him just stay down there and continue with that circus uh, for the next uh, five, six, seven months to be on uh, display? Don't be pointing the finger at anybody else, the so-called Miami family, because you and your handlers and cohorts and big money supporters, you're the ones who called all the shots, even though you weren't supposed to be calling the shots, especially after they legally took away the custody. You had no right to keep hold of that kid. But he had a chance to do it in a way that you might have impressed some other people, got one over some supporters, but no. Instead of doing that hard-ass, no matter what the uh, compromise was supposed to be, the answer was always the same. No. That's not negotiation. That's not compromise. It's kidnapping. We got him. You ain't getting him. In fact, you remember the comments that one day when Lazaro said they'll have to, and, and also the, uh, the uh, daughter, they'll have to step over our body to get him. We're not surrendering him. Well, guess what? They did. Five six seven oh five sixty. My comments are so shallow and predictable. And it's interesting. I, well, of course, forget about that. It's interesting to see, by the way, except for the NBC poll, which they seem to have difficulty finding the right people. But every other poll, the CNN, CBS, all the other polls, a sizable majority of the people, including, by the way, in the, the local polls, agreed. Eighty-six percent of our audience, which of course speaks for itself, because we got people uh, who aren't uh, professional ethnics, like George and you. Now, see, there you go with that crap again. Right. Totally, absolutely wrong. I, I was thinking about that on vacation. I wasn't going to bring it up today. I was going to wait till tomorrow, but I'll bring it up again. The fact that you believe that is so astonishing to me. It's, it's so shocking. Not about the humor. No, but you believe that I care about any of those things, about the holidays, that I'm proud of that. It, it's, it's foolishness. Nevertheless, you bring it up constantly. You call people anti-Semites. You call Gentiles goyims. Yeah. Daily. And what about racists and uh, Cuban haters and every other people? It doesn't make any difference to me. You're not ashamed of being Jewish. You wear it proudly. No, I, I don't wear it proudly. You're wrong. I don't wear it proudly. It's, okay. it's a I'm joke. Wrong. The language is a joke. You're, I'm telling you, you're scary. You really are. You're scaring the hell out of me. Your professional Cubanist is coming through. Joe Costello, if you're listening, you're right, Joe. He's a professional spick. Boy, I can't. I just, I can't. I did. That's the, oh, I didn't think about this place at all during that ten days I was gone. I was having a great time, but I did think about three or four times about that. It's very disturbing to me that you can work with somebody this long and they still haven't got any, any clue as to what you're all about. None. Hey, get rid of your HM oh! with exciting new affordable PPO plans from Independent Insurance Group. And listen to this: you'll even get your health premiums back at age 65. Does your current in his own roofing business? Right. And he obviously needs to make a living. This other uh, Donato Dalrip or whatever, mm -hmm. who uh, I, I think looks just like Jay Leno, this guy's got no job. This guy's just sucking on the public. You know, I'm always, oh, whenever he, I see he, talk shows about, like, rescues, they always reunite somebody months later. I've never heard of anybody living with the family. He, he's part of the whole operation. Yeah, it's sick and, and one last thing I wanted to ask your opinion on, and I'll let you go. Um, there are six people from the family right now down in Miami, at my uh, uh, knowledge, maybe more. I know for a fact six of them, and they're like saying that they're going to stay there for a long time, maybe a month. Who is picking up the bill? I'm assuming six people is going to take it. All, all, all the same organizations who p picked up the bill that were going to put up the two million dollars to pay the ransom to keep the kid in the country if, they, if the father would go along with it. The people that are paying for all the uh, the plane trips, all the other expenses, all the uh, Cuban organizations in Dade County. This yeah, is I this mean, is one last thing. This is all, all, sir. It's all an. This family, you know, in the beginning did a noble thing, of course. They took this kid in, and they didn't really do anything different than a foster family. You know, I mean, they brought the kid in, they showed him love, um, which they should have. Um, and now it's like they probably have as little right to see the kid as I do or you do, correct? I mean, they have no custody well, no, at all. And the other guy that asked me, what's the big hurry? What are the president's big hurry? Let me ask you this. What was the, what's the big hurry? They, within a matter of hours, they had to go up and see him to see if he was all right, as if this kid was uh, going to be in a straitjacket or tied up in a uh, rope somewhere in a corner with communist slogans being yelled at him. You see, the reason that the family had to go stalking and chasing after the kid immediately, if not sooner, was because, th just like all along, they are terrified scared crapless that every minute that he spends with the father he'll be deprogrammed from the incessant brainwashing that took place in that house every single day to set him against the father and to change his whole attitude about oh yes how wonderful it is here and he wants to stay here and to say he became a puppet of that so-called Miami family and don't you kid yourselves I mean just anybody with common decency after all the trauma that this kid has been through 
including the unnecessary stuff that happened Saturday, which they caused to happen by their own refusal to really negotiate and hand him over and to comply with the law. After all the trauma, wouldn't any decent people leave him alone with the father for a few days? A little peace and quiet away from the media circus that they've subjected him to for the last five months? Uh -huh. You bet your sweet ass, but these are not decent people. These are liars. These are people who are nothing more than pimps being handled by all of these organizations, by all these grave robbers that you see on there. Lincoln Diaz Bullard, Ramon Salas Sanchez with the schmata on his head now, uh, the Armando Gutierrez, the PR guy with all the judges in his pocket, uh, Jose uh, da, Gar Garcia Pedrosa, I can't even, and not to mention the two mayors, of course, who are also just pimps. That's where all the money is coming from to finance this whole operation. And by the way, some of those sad, toothless people that were down there for weeks and weeks and weeks on end, they're also just pawns in the game. Just being used and manipulated on cue, as usual, which has gone on in this town for too goddamn long. And here I'm sitting over there, five, six thousand miles away, seeing these pictures again. Same old tired crap. Seeing the fires in the middle of the street. Seeing three police officers getting beaten with a baseball bat, winding up in a hospital. And this, by the way, in the same city where the mayor of the city has been on proclaiming for weeks now, oh, there's not going to be any violence. Miami is a peaceful city, yada, yada, yada. And then we have all these uh, people coming on breathlessly yesterday saying, oh, well, gee, it could have been a lot worse. Look how restrained everybody was. It could have been a lot worse except for the fact that the Miami police did a hell of a good job. Nice going again, porkers. Oh! You betcha. And you know one of the sweetest parts of this whole deal is that the city of Miami police was informed by the INS. One of the other, uh, there was a Miami police officer on one of the vans that pulled up and part of the operation. And of course, Mayor Carroyo and Mayor Pinga Pequena, they're foaming at the mouth because they weren't informed. In fact, Joe Carroyo says that if it was within his power, he would fire the police chief, but he doesn't have the authority to do that. Because he didn't let him in on it. And you want to know why these mayors weren't let in on it? Because within a matter of seconds after they would have gotten the word, they'd have been on the phone of these other henchmen who just gave it the list. Because they weren't a solution to the problem. They were part of the problem. They were down there holding hands, grandstanding. And there was Carroyo right there early in the morning. On worldwide TV on CNN screaming and carrying on about the federal government and about you'd expect this in communist Cuba and ba 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 beep and all this other crap. And about how on uh, the, the, day, the day before Easter they wanted to reunite this kid with his atheist father. Which is interesting, by the way. You'll notice that the uh, family allegedly yesterday, the real family, went to a church service at Andrews Air Force Base. You know, they had some real interesting stuff. In fact, last night... On one of the reports, I think it was on CNN, on the uh, that uh, Time show that they have, Time, and they, they collaborate with Time Magazine. They showed that all the news coverage has been on the air in Havana, all over Cuba. Well, except for the raid. No, no, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about uh, a, a ongoing, including comments from both sides, comments from the family, the so-called Miami family. So I've been on there. Thanks, Sal. Sal Falcone just brought in pizzas for uh, fat people. And water. And water. Well, he, well, you eat the pizza, I'll drink the water. Here's a call from Columbus, Ohio. Hello. Hey, Neil. Yes, sir. Uh, I lived in Plantation for 20 years, and I was a devotee of yourself on all those different stations. I've been out of there for two years now, and watching this charade from 1,200 miles away and knowing what must be going on down there in Little Havana... Uh, I, I got to tell you, you got to get out of there. The place is such a cesspool, and you become numb to it, living in that crap every day because that's all you hear about. Well, I just came back from ten days in Amsterdam, so I don't, I don't uh, spend all of my life uh, in this town. Yeah, the rumor is that uh, you're finishing out your contract and you're leaving. What do you mean the rumor is? Well, I got a friend who listens to you, and he sends me tapes once in a while. Yeah. Uh, you said that uh, this is really it, that you're fed up down there. and. Uh... Well, 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 first of all, what do you mean fed up down there? The fact is, uh, you know, I'm 57 years old. I'm not going to be one of those people that's going to die on the air if I can help it. Uh, I don't plan on working forever. Uh, have you uh, decided where you're going to live, or that's not going to be uh, uh, public? Yeah, probably in Amsterdam. Okay, well, uh, I miss you, and uh, i got to tell you... Uh, 
that outside of South Florida, they really are living, breathing people who are nice to deal with. The pace of life is not so frantic that everyone's up each other's ass all day. I'm, I'm well aware of that. I just came back from uh, 10 of the best days of my life. Okay, Richie, you're a douchebag, and you get out of there too, buddy. Okay, have a great day. Don't worry about where I'm going, pal. I'm doing just fine, even though my uh, stockbroker is losing my money faster than they can print it, but uh, he'll, uh, he'll be history soon. Five, six, seven, oh, what are you laughing about? Hey, I'm not going to just sit around and wait for this guy to show me what a hot shot he is. Oh, yeah. but See, uh, I've got a guy that's a good talker, but he's not a good listener. You know, I tell him what my goals are, what my what are my uh, game plan is, and he just, ba -ba 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 -ba, you know, with his high, which, by the way, it looked to me like the market was taking another gigantic tumble again this morning. Another tech, uh, the Dow is only down 16, now 15, but the NASDAQ was uh, now only 13. Look at that. But the NASDAQ's down 215 points. There you go. So there goes more of my money. This is what happens when you get involved with hot shots. People that want to show you how smart they are and how dumb you are. Yeah, dumb was right. I was dumb, all right. I gave him all my money. Here's, a, uh, Mo here's Miami. Hello. Neil. Yes, sir. Long-time listener. Um, not going to insult you. I love the way that you usually think. Unfortunately, in this issue, uh, you have alienated me a little bit. I think you are an expert at, um, at proving whatever point you want to prove. Um, and I, I wish that I had long time enough to uh, convince you about some of the. You're not going to. You're not going to convince me about anything else having to do with the story because okay. it, it ain't going to happen. We, let, to, we let can me, talk from now until midnight six weeks from Tuesday, and it ain't going to happen. Let me point some of the inconsistencies of your thinking. Yeah. You uh, criticized this family for. Within two hours after the kid was taken away by guns, which I'm sure that you yourself couldn't believe that the government would have done it this Sir, way. I, I absolutely do believe it. No, no, and you're I, defending it now, but I don't think that you could believe that they... That sure, did. How, how else would they do it? Uh, let, me, let me tell how you how... How else how, would they do it? Would they just knock on the door and say, oh, would you please give us the kid? Uh, let me tell you how else they could have done it. They could have gone in there armed, but they could have been plain clothes, suit and ties, and, and with your know, weapons hidden, and say, look, we're here to get the kid. The family sure, that also said... Sure, that's not the way these things are done. Uh, well, not the way they're done. Well, I don't, I, I don't, I don't think that this country that that is a bastion of human rights, children's rights, religious rights. Sir, this rights. is a child who is being held against the law. That's called kidnapping. He was being held against the law. This family, that sir, I'm, I, I have to break it. I'm not going to sit here listening if I'm offended you. Too bad. I don't give my opinions based on whether I'm going to pacify the audience to get ratings to be popular. I give my real opinions and uh, f uh, deliver the consequences. If every Cuban who listens this radio show wants to say goodbye because they don't like what I have to say. Bye bye. Have a great life. I don't care. You're not going to manipulate me into, into, into this in this phony shock of seeing the government coming in there with guns drawn. Why the hell not? Those INS people are got those agents have a right to defend themselves, especially in the middle of this group of crazy people that have been carrying on down there for a week and week and, and who knows how many of them might have been armed. And in a town like this, are you going to take your chances? No. You bet your sweet ass you're not. The fact is that nobody got seriously hurt. Nobody inside got uh, injured. There was no shooting. The kid was taken out. He's doing fine. That's what you ought to be concerned about if indeed you really care about the kid. And let's face it, you don't. <laughs> It's 1102 at 560 WQM. Here's one of the most pathetic faxes I ever received in my life. Uh, please forgive us. Here's one of these fake letters, uh, one of those uh, deals about Cuban this and Cuban that, and what we've apologized for all the success and busy our ends and yada yada. Yeah. Probably from that uh, jackass, you know, who's got a new uh, typewriter or something now, word processor. 
5670560, pound 560 on the AT&T line. What do we got? We got Hank coming up from uh, Shula State 2 this afternoon, too. 5 o'clock, you got uh, Hank with Al Downing. 6 o'clock, talking baseball with Donnie B. Phillies and the Marlins. Is that John Henry? He's a genius, ain't he? Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. They're off to their best start in history, 12 and 8, and he's talking about, well, we may have to dismantle the team again and sell everybody because we can't afford them. Nice going, John Henry. And 10 o'clock after the game, you got the Eddie K. Rhymes with GA. See, if, if your goal when you call this program is to convince me to agree with you, then, then don't waste your time. I'll listen to your opinion if you're reasonable, but if, if you're not going to be satisfied unless I agree with you, then off. Here's Hollywood. Hello. Hi, Neil. Yes, sir. Yeah. <clears throat> That uh, Mary Elisa, you know, she said at one time that, you know, that they have more than just cameras in the house. And, you know, implying that they, have, that they might have guns in the house. And Lazaro said that, well, they're going to have to come and take the kid. And, here, uh, here on the front page of this morning's Herald, it says at least one person in the house of the Miami family uh, had a uh, security chief with a concealed weapons permit had been frequently seen at the home with a handgun strapped to his ankle. Federal authorities point to Mario Blas Miranda, 48, a licensed private investigator, and who was also part of this uh, team of uh, crazy people ahead down there at the house. All right, at Channel 4, on, they had like the little logo type thing, and also Elian seized. You know, it didn't say Elian returned to his father. Yeah. It was Elian seized and Elian kidnapped and mad. Well, in the Sun Sentinel, it says Dad and the uh, Sun reunited. The Herald seized in big letters. And that's how yeah. most of the local TV stations played it up, too. And, uh, I, Ike Simmons was a real big disappointment to me. He got caught up in this yeah. junk about everything. And he, he got, like, sucked right into him with the Rick Sanchez's and all of them. And it was a real disappointment to see Ike Simmons. I thought he had more integrity than that. But, um... My vote for the biggest asshole is the fisherman. Okay, I think he may win hands down. Yeah. Thanks. Okay, bye. And his cousin, I think his cousin votes yes, too? Uh -huh. Even though he ain't speaking to us anymore? Uh-huh. 5670560, oh, pound 560 on the AT&T wireless line. Now, it seems to me that, uh, let's see, An um, Angela Ray of Channel 4 was mentioned in here. She asked Mayor County... Uh, uh, County Mayor Alex Papinga Pequena, who must have spent his day doing nothing but broadcast interviews, he knew force was an option, so why are you so surprised? Nice going there, sweetheart. Also, Ike Siemens, according to Tom Jicka, noted that highway blockages at intersection fire stage by protesters could be counterproductive, and in that uh, they in turn neutral parties caught in turmoil against the exiles' cause. Nice going there, Ike, in spite of what this last guy said. I wasn't here, so I didn't see any of that stuff that happened Saturday. Didn't get home to about 3 yesterday afternoon. I did see the embarrassing uh, job by Michelle Gillen on Channel 4 last night. Embarrassing, sweetheart. I don't think that was really you. I think it was a fake picture of you on Channel 4 last night, Michelle. What do you think? Possibility? Uh-huh. Here's Paul Springs. Hello. Welcome back, Neil. Yes, sir. As bad as the performance was by Rotundo Ass Temple, nobody outdid Rick Sanchez on Saturday. Yeah. On Saturday... He, he was he was talking to one of the reporters down there, and they were getting and the reporter was telling him about an article that was going to be in one of the national papers about about the riots down there with the Cubans, and how they were describing how they would chase a policeman down for a block, and they spat on him and they beat him up before finally the other police came in and broke it up. Yeah. And he has the nerve to say... Well, well, the police spokesman, Bill Schwartz, this was also on international TV, the way that they were throwing crap at him and the one guy tried to put his hand right. on his neck and uh, they started shoving and pushing and then finally and some says, of the people... He says, oh, now this is the way it's going to be written, but we down here, we know the real story. In fact, you know, some of the people that pulled those two Cubans off of him were actually Cubans. That that was that was his mitigation for that. Yeah. Then about 20 minutes later, they're describing a fire on 836. Well, oh, no, there's a big fire over far, there. As far as far as it goes, that that part of what he said is true. There were some of the Cubans in the crowd who pulled uh, the other got people away and got the uh, Bill Schwartz away from them. That's true. Okay. Then about 15 minutes later, there's a fire burning on the other side of 836. He goes, Oh no, I see a fire burning on 836, but we can't assume that that was done by protesters. Now, that could have been one of those crap houses yeah. that after Rick burns down, everybody could have, could have says, just oh, one of those thank brush you. Fires, right. so, okay, no. have a great day, sir. See, my suggestion to you is if you really want to know what's going on, watch uh, CNN, watch MSNBC, watch Fox News. Do not watch the local news uh, channels uh, during any kind of a situation like this because all you're going to get is what this guy was just describing. You know what you're going to get, so why are you surprised? Why should anybody be shocked?
The night that we were leaving on Thursday night, I saw the Channel 7 News at 6 o'clock, and Sanchez was on there apologizing, making the sweeping apology for the Cuban community and about how they feel so bad because they're always picked on, like when they protest against Los Van Van and yada, yada, yada. I guess nobody ever told them that this is the only county in America that's got its own uh, restrictive laws on the books that restricts uh, performers. from. This is why you lost the Latin Grammys, Rick. This is why you lost the Junior Pan Am Games. This is why Dade County is the laughing stock of America, because you've got your own foreign policy. You've got restrictive laws in the books that are patently unconstitutional, by the way, preventing people from coming in here and performing or uh, displaying their work or whatever it is that they do if they don't meet the standards of being a non-communist enough. But don't confuse him with the facts. And like I said, if you want to get the real story, watch CNN. Here's a mobile in Pompano. Hello. Hey, Neil. How you doing, man? Okay. A couple of things. Uh, first of all, we all know the family brought it upon themselves. Yes. Second of all, those two clowns who call themselves the mayor, do they really think the federal government cares what they have to say? Obviously not. And uh, I think the most important question, which most people aren't asking, and lawyers are, a, are a, you know, officers of the court mm -hmm. and are supposed to uphold the law and these lawyers have done nothing but encourage their clients to ignore to break the law orders. to break the law yeah in fact yeah, that's and, and they, should be, they should be uh, disbarred they should be ain't, ain't gonna happen they should be held in contempt ain't gonna happen yeah but th i don't understand it would happen to anybody else you know okay have a great day sir yeah, Spencer I gets on here and he says, oh, Lazaro Gonzalez uh, is not an illegal alien, and he doesn't have to uh, respond to what the INS tells him. He doesn't have to obey them. I hate to break the lose to you, Mr. Uh, the uh, lose news, but the fact is you do lose. The fact is that they were given temporary custody of the boy. The INS had jurisdiction over that. Of course he had to comply with what the INS told. But as, as has been consistent with this whole deal from the beginning, they just make it up as they go along. They make up the law. They make up the stories. They lie. They twist. And if anybody doesn't believe that this kid was being brainwashed and poisoned against his father every day that he was in that house, just take a look at the story with the phone calls. Even after the father got to this country and was up there in, in Maryland, 30 times he tried to call, and because, of course, now they can afford to have call, uh, caller ID and call waiting in the big screen TV in there with all their handlers, because they had caller ID, they could see who was calling. And so about 27 or 8 of those 30 times they saw who was calling, they picked up the phone and slammed it down. And a couple of times that they did allow him to speak to the kid, they were monitoring as closely as possible, coaching and standing in the background. And every time, just as when the calls from Cuba had come, cut the calls short. Which is why they were terrified to let this kid out of their absolute grasp and control and brainwashing process. And if anybody doesn't understand that as to the crux of their hysteria, of getting them as quickly as possible after he was seized from that home, then you're missing the whole story. He's their tool. They have to manipulate him. Just like the abuela said, we want to manipulate that tool. Wonder if Daddy checked. See if it's still there. 10 past 11 at 560 QAM. If you're looking for the best night's sleep available, then go no further than your telephone. Just pick up your instrument right now and call Dial a Mattress. They can deliver you a great new mattress today, usually within just a couple hours after you make the order. Saggy mattress, wave it goodbye. Lumpy mattress, adios. Do your back and yourself a big favor. Call Dial a Mattress. Speak to a trained vetting consultant. I've ordered my last couple of mattresses from these people, and you'll be pleased doing business with them because, first of all, they save you up to 60% off what you pay for the same goods in your department or bedding store. Secondly, they knock on the door a couple hours after you make the call. And thirdly, you're completely uh, guaranteed. If you're not 100% happy when the driver delivers the new mattress, just tell them and they take it back with no questions asked. So pick up your phone and call 1-800-MATTRESS, M-A-T-T-R-E-S, and you can pick from the top names in the business, like Serta and Sealy and Simmons, and still save up to 60% off what you pay in the department stores. And if you mention the Neil Rogers Show when you call, they'll knock another 50 bucks off when you buy a new premium mattress. Call them right now. You'll be sleeping in comfort tonight. Call 1-800-M-A-T-T-R-E-S. Leave off the last S because it stands for seizure. This is 5 60 QAM. Okay, let's continue. You're thinking about getting a new car. Of course, you're not just thinking. Call to the one and track. It bounces up and leaves the ballpark. The Marlins and Phillies wrap up their series tonight at Pro Player Stadium. Joe Angel, Dave O'Brien, and John Chambi call it for you. Marlins on deck starts at 6.30 on Sports Radio 560 QAM. Hi, this is Larry King, and they don't come any better than Neil Rogers. Pope John Paul has apologized for past transgressions of the church. Hey, 
We messed up. I'm sorry. No hard feelings. <laughs> and those apologies felt so good. Pope John Paul is taking them on tour for the Vatican's first ever Apology Tour 2000. First of all, I apologize to everyone who sat behind me at the movies. Next time, I don't wear the big hat. The Apology Tour 2000. Here's your chance to hear Pope John Paul II as you've never heard him before. Oh, yes, and I should apologize for the whole fish on Friday thing. I think if I had to eat one more fish stick, I was going to puke. The Apology Tour 2000 lets the Pope get it all off his chest. And I talked to God, by the way. He's telling me to say he's sorry for some stuff, too. He says, Bubonic Lake, oops. <laughs> Mount Vesuvius, my bad. And Leslie, he's got no excuse for the backstreet boys. <laughs> that was big time, boo. <laughs> the Pope John Paul Apology Tour 2000. You'll be sorry if you miss it. Oh, yes. I'm sorry you paid 20 bucks with a two-drink minimum to get in tonight. <laughs> sorry. It's 11.32 at 560 WQ. I can't wait till Leo DiCaprio interviews the Pope. Uh -huh. It's going to be big. Here's a Bart of Farta, West Palm, which says on top of uh, all these things that happened on Saturday, it was Earth Day, a day to try to give the Earth a break from all the uh, pollution and crap we put in the air and the water. But in Miami, we're watching people burning tires and dumping trash, et cetera, and setting it on fire and polluting the air. Nice going air oh! in Miami, as usual. Here's a mobile in Sunrise. Hello. Yeah, hi, Neil. Uh, good morning. I just want to make a couple of quick, po quick points. Yes, sir. Um, one is the cu Cuban community down there in Miami opportunity to disprove what everybody thinks about them and they blew it they they did exactly what everybody expected them to do That's well, when, when you say the cuban community how many people were out to well, the exiles i mean yeah down there. but how many uh, of them are there Thirty thousand, fifty thousand, twenty thousand. it doesn't seem that there's that many but yeah uh you know you have people outside of day going well, you see, that's exactly what, you know... No, and it's of course, because they're the ones that were always visible. George says he believes they're only really... Yeah, but I think he's, uh, you know... And it goes for the politicians, the, the, the community leaders, and the... Uh, they just all look a lot the same. And the exile, and not the exile, the anchorman, too. Yeah. Um, second thing is, you know, they don't. what they don't realize is the laws of this country aren't subjective, that they're good as long as they don't apply to them. Mm -hmm. You know, that's not they, the way they it They just works. make it up as they go along. Right, right. And it's funny how... They were going to do all these things in the negotiations now after the fact, but for six months they've done nothing. In, in addition to which, all along they've been saying from the beginning, we want Alien, he deserves to have his right day in court. That's what their lawyers have been saying and all these politicians. He deserves to have his day in court. We don't want him to go back to Cuba until he has his day in court. Well, now he's been guaranteed he's going to have his day in court. The father is going nowhere. The father said, he, I'm not going anywhere. He's staying here until hell freezes over if it takes that long, but for all the appeals to be heard, if it has to go all the way to the Supreme Court. Now, why should there be any, uh, any unhappiness now? Well, and they, they, uh, the only card that they have to play now is the luck that the AP photographer knocked on the side door, and the mother opened the door and let him in, and he just, by the blindest of luck, happened to be there to snap that photograph. That's the only ace uh, card that they got left at all. You know, maybe they got to get off the gravy train now. Well, that's what they're upset maybe about. That's why well, they're what do you, so what do you think the fisherman is crying about? Well, I think because he had to come out of the closet on, uh, on uh, you know, on national. Well, maybe, maybe uh, they TV. caught him. Maybe they caught him in a closet. That might have been it. Okay, have a great that day, sir. There was a fisherman in a closet. Oh! That's our poll question today on our internet, on our website, neilrogers.com. Which is the biggest asshole, Lazaro Gonzalez? Maybe I shouldn't have used the word asshole, because Lazaro to me is more like a scumbag than an asshole. You know what I'm saying? More like a real uh -huh. low-life scumbag. But it's nevertheless, that's the question. Biggest asshole, Lazaro Gonzalez, Maris Gracius Gonzalez, or Donato Dalrymple, the fisherman, oh! who easily gets my vote. He passed the other ones like they were standing still. And that article, at, uh, the, the, uh, did I say that, I hope? That one of the listeners faxed me. Yes, I did save it. Nice going, Neil. Thank you. Oh, good. Thanks. They go up there to meet with Juan Miguel Gonzalez, who at least is decent enough to give them the meeting to thank them for saving his son. They want to find out what kind of a man he is, and Sam Ciancio, the other fisherman who was in on the meeting, says, As we entered the room within three minutes, my cousin was crying at this man's feet, saying, No man in no country has the right to separate you from your son. <laughs> Oh, man, this is the best. See, how come you people in the media who want to twist and manipulate public opinion, how come we don't have more of this kind of stuff? How come we don't have more information on all those desperate phone calls the father tried to make from Maryland and kept getting hung up on over and over again? 
because the family wanted to do their brainwashing uninterrupted, unimpeded, and continue poisoning the kid's mind against the father. Here's North Miami. Hello. Neil? Yes, sir. How you doing? All right. I love your show. You are the best. Yeah, I am. We're going to put you the mayor of Miami, too. Sure. Uh, Neil, I, uh, do you, did you say anything about the boot, uh, the CNN boot that got uh, ripped down and then... Sure. Uh, did yeah, you say but, that? Uh-huh. I mean, because, they, because they have a, um, a bureau in, in Cuba, so naturally, communista, communista, let's rip their thing down. That's the freedom that uh, they... Right. Want. That's right. And uh, also, the uh, Mayor Carollo... Uh, he's a douchebag. I can't say more bad things he's about him. He's an asshole. Guy. Yeah. Thank you very much. Okay. Keep the good work. And Zagazun. Take it easy. Okay. 560560. Oh, Tom 560 on the AT&T wireless line. And uh, what what else rhymes with Pike, George, besides Little Tyke? Huh? We're talking about Elion. He's a little Dyke. 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 That's right. There you go with that Janet Reno stuff again. Oh! Communista in Lisboa. I love that sign. They had a, Yeah, it was a Saturday morning right in front of the house. There was one of the stragglers there with a sign. Comunista e Lisboa. What does that mean? It means I'll see you in uh, Lisbon, something like that? Uh-huh. Here's a Cudjo Key. Hello. Hi, Leo. Or is that Cujo? Uh, Cudjo. Like I said, go leave, go. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't carry it away. Yeah, I just got back from George's uh, vacation land up in uh, Ash County. Yeah. And there was no Ilion all day, all the time up there. Oh, really, right. Really nice. Yeah, that's why it was so great in Amsterdam. Up, up until Saturday when this all hell broke loose, uh, you know, it was uh, way in the background. Yeah, yeah. I was, I was in uh, London a couple of weeks ago, and the, the big news there, which I thought was hysterical, was that they now give dogs passports so yeah. they can go to the continent and come back. Mm-hmm. And, uh, That's the Brits for you, man. Yeah, yeah. See, one thing about the British, which I'm sure you've already discovered, the men are all like real pussy and the women are all real butch. Right. So it, so it kind of balances it out. Yeah, it does. It does. And uh, poor old Janet Reno, no matter what she did. Yeah, she can't win. She can't win. I mean, if she'd gone in there with nothing, it wouldn't have happened. And it, but ha what she did do, all that's all wrong. But I wish she'd stop shaking on that podium. You know, she keeps rattling. If somebody tell her that she's rattling the podium and we can hear yeah. it, I just just stand yeah. back, just stand back a few inches, Janet, please. Yeah, she yeah she would if she just takes some uh, medication. But she says she's afraid or people will say, well, her brain's not working if she takes medication. Is that what it is? Yeah. Well, they're already seeing that in Dade. Okay, have a great day, sir. You too. God bless Bye. us. Nice going there, Janet. Oh. Let me say it again. Janet Reno is a goddess. Oh. Well. Kind of. A real butch goddess. Remember the last person they said was a goddess? Look what happened to her. <laughs> 21 before noon at 560 WQM. If you want some fantastic pizza. In fact, it's Passover week. You don't have to pass on pizza because you can get that great matzo pizza at the world-famous pizza loft. Jeff has been making this for years. Are we going to get some this week, by the way, George? Like maybe tomorrow? That was some last week, but I could go from where it was great. He's got it down pat. Yeah. Who, oh, Pat or Jeff? U-A-M. I must be crazy. I must be nuts. Long, long time ago, I can still remember when these other dreams would make me smile. Yes. I knew if I had my chance that I could make this a big extend and maybe I'd be wealthy for a while. Ask me why I think I am British Tomorrow maybe I'll be Yiddish I'm back on MTV This version is so cheesy Boy. Can't remember if I cried When I saw how bad my hair was dyed Something made me run and hide The day my career died Amen. It's 11.45 at 5.60 WQIM. This, this story that uh, Lauren, thank you so much, Lauren. God bless you. I'll pray for you. Send me from the Sun Sentinel. A headline, I don't know what page this was on. Alien's fate carves rifts between his rescuers about the uh, two um, fishermen and this thing about how Donato was sucking up at the father's feet and crying and uh, carrying on to his face. 
You're just an exploiter. You're a deadbeat, Donato. You're a piece of crap. Go get a job. Get a life. Here's a lady in Miami. Hello. Hello. Yes, ma'am. Hi. I just want to know if you read the article in the New York Times about the family history of Ilian Gonzalez. No. It's called Love in the Time of Castro. Yeah. And it is well-balanced, well-written. And this family has been at political odds since the 60s when Lazaro's sister came over here. And uh, it's a good article. You should read it. Okay. Okay? Thanks. Appreciate it. Okay. Bye-bye. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the AT and T wireless line as we continue rolling along singing a song. Guess what? The good news is, is we, he's with Daddy. Oh. They're going to the Y. Where are they going to spend the, the next few weeks? Why? River, yeah. Well, we got it. We might as well use it. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. Yeah. Why? River. Look what a good job they did there with that piece of cord. Now, people, which one was that piece of cord? Number six? Oh no, I think it was number nine. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, Israeli piece of cord. Middle East peace. Another oxymoron, just like Northern Ireland. Same old crap. Good old time religion, baby. We hate you, you hate us. Bada bing, bada boom. We're going to get you first. That's the world. Sick. Sick and crazy. Here's Miami. Hello. Neil. Yes, sir. Welcome back to our little banana republic. Thank you so much. Um, I'm just going to run down a couple of quick things, if I can. Uh -huh. um, the family and everybody coming out saying that they had no idea who it was coming through the door and everything. Mm -hmm. Yet, if you look at the uh, the film footage of it, Right before they pull up in the vans, Gutierrez and these other guys come running out of the house asking the crowd to come over. So they obviously knew somebody was coming. Yeah. Um, and, you know, those big yellow letters that said INS Federal Agent kind of gave it away for me. That kind of was the uh, tip off to me, yeah. Yeah. In fact, the one picture that they keep showing over and over again that was on the front pages. Uh huh. Uh, it, it seems to me that the guy is wearing, let me see, here's the picture for the AU-15 million time. That says Border Patrol, like in uh, plain English. <laughs> yeah. Well, that helps if you know it. Well, they said when they came to the door, they, uh, you know, spoke in English and in Espanol, just to be sure, but uh, didn't get a response either time. Right. And um, there was also uh, Mary Crazy Ass, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, when she was, uh, one of the funniest things I heard her say in her press conference stating, and I don't remember the exact context of it, but that uh, Janet Reno and Bill Clinton, when they're talking to the cameras, they're eating everyone's brains. And CNN ran it again later in the evening, and I just died laughing. They were eating everyone's brains? Yeah, yeah, I, and she that's a quote that she said that, but I don't remember the exact context <laughs> of it. Okay. And, um, she, um, and, uh, and let's thank the Lord she ain't back in the hospital again. You know, it's pretty miraculous after all this uh, trauma this weekend. She's still doing okay, and she's still able to get on that plane. <laughs> yeah, without too much problem. And There was also uh, one of the Honda dealerships around here. I don't want to give him any plugs, because yeah. I can't believe he did it. Ran a full-page ad. Norman Brayman. Norman Brayman. Yeah, comparing uh, this to the uh, Holocaust. Yeah, it was ridiculous. I'm glad you reminded me of that. Oh, hey, Norman, I don't know what's got into you. Maybe he's got the, the missing brains or something. What kind of an ad was that? I, that Appealing was, to all Jews oh. to uh, sympathize with the plight of this poor kid and communist Castro and Yadi. I mean, what the hell is this man talking about? Yeah. And my vote, I can't vote with Del Nato as the biggest asshole because I can't even give him enough credit to equal that. Okay, that's you, you're place, right. You're yeah. right. It would be an insult to assholes all over the world. You're right. Have a great day. Sir. You too, Neil. God bless you. Bye. Do you want Channel 4? Do I want Channel 4 what? In here, shoot me. Of course not. Uh, get him out of here. No, I do not want Channel 4 in here. I don't want Channel 6. I don't want Channel 7. I don't want Whammy. We already went through that. I thought but I had communicated that through Carlos, but apparently they wouldn't take no for an answer. The answer is no. no. You understand? You get it? No. No. And oh, no. No, no way. Neat. No. no. Okay. God. I locked the door. Good. L lock the door and keep those back. Why are they here? Yeah, they just walked in. Oh, they just walked in. Well, guess what? The answer is still no. You're not getting in, okay? You're not getting in. I'm going in the closet with little kid. I'm not coming out. I'm going back in the closet. You'll have to shoot your way in here, Channel 4. The answer is no. no until Angelo Ray to get some help. Tell that bitch to get some psychiatric help, okay? She is certifiable. I've told her that seven, eight, maybe nine Nine. times already. Get her some help. <laughs> Man, what, uh, one of these days she's just going to lose it right on here. That's probably what they're waiting for. Get at least uh, 80 or behind each year. Here's a lady in Dania Beach. Hello. Hi, Neil. Yes, um, ma'am. I just want to say I watched <clears throat> that interview on Channel 4 live with... Uh, the cousin of Donato Dal Temple. Yeah, same uh, Ciencia, yeah. Right. Um, they asked him, first thing they asked him, they said, what do you think of your cousin? And he said, he's a monkey. Right. 
And then... He said he's only doing this to get his face on the camera. He's an exploiter and a monkey. Right. They showed the interview later. They edited it all out. They, they didn't... Any of the comments that he said negative about Donato? Really? They... they how do you like that? When in doubt, they bleeped it out. Oh, yeah, and they said, well, he said some negative comments, so we're not going to... Well, why not? In other words, this is America, and you can say whatever we decide we'll put on the air, and the rest of what you say, if we don't like it, we won't put on there? Right. What what channel was this on? Channel 4. Oh, Channel 4. Oh, this was the live... Aha! Uh -huh. Goodbye, Channel 4! I made the right decision! It was, first, it was the live interview with Channel 4, and he was just, he was speaking his mind. He called him a monkey. and right. he, did, he also said the last job he, last job he remembers him having is cleaning apartments. Uh-huh. That's the last job he can remember him with having. With his tongue. <laughs> Toilets with a tongue. I want to go down there and wave the Cuban flag upside down. Okay, or maybe put a garbage bag at the bottom. And that Senator Boob Smith? Yeah. Where did he get that egg? I thought it came out of his ass. It's Easter. Have a great day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's got a big one. Rectum. And an egg, too. Senator Bob Smith, Senator Bob Graham, a lot of crazy senators named Bob. Uh -huh. They're bobbing up and down, up and down. I think they have a word for that. It's called a <laughs> job. Brings back memories of Amsterdam. Oh, I'm sorry. Five six seven oh five sixty Ponce. George says I'm proud to I'm not ashamed to be Jewish. What an interesting way that was to express I'm not ashamed to be Jewish. I said you're proud. No, I'm not. Punch. No, I'm not. No, you said I'm not ashamed. That was just a, a response to your no, own. You said, you said that I wasn't ashamed to be Jewish. I'm not ashamed to be gay either. Right. And just like when I took that poll, if, if 95% of the audience would have said, we would like to show better if you were straight, do you think that I would go out and give me a wife? You think that I would change? I'd come out here and put on a, a phony act? I would do a Tom Cruise deal here, a Rob Lowe, one of those deals? I didn't say that you should be. You should be any of those things. Yeah. No, but you said, I'm, I'm, I'm not ashamed to be Jewish. And I'm not ashamed to be a spick. Yeah. But, but every a, time I open up a, a mouth But about there's a bigotry. difference between not being ashamed to be something and being a professional, uh, The only time is. I open up my mouth is when somebody says something bigoted. You are so uptight with your Cubanity, and you don't even realize it. You don't even, you don't understand you don't. it. Or don't understand what? You don't realize your uh, Jewishness, how often it comes up and comes out. It came up and came out plenty the last week, and that was in Amsterdam, okay? And mind your own business. Or I'll tell the abuelas on you. Here's Hollywood. Hello. Neil, welcome back. Yes, sir. I wanted to just uh, chime in real quick about uh, Sensencio. He was on there. When Channel 4 did the live interview, he actually said Bullshit on the air. Now, which one was this? Uh, the cousin. Donato's cousin. Oh, Sam, oh, Ciancio, yeah. He said, this is all a bunch of bullshit, which was great. Uh-huh. Nice going there, Sam. Oh! And when they came back to the anchors, they had to apologize for the language. But they won't run that over and bleep that part out, which kills me. Yeah. Also, Rick Sanchez, he was another idiot. He said while the, when the INS agent was bringing little Elian to the van that he was being dragged. I was so incensed that I she, called the, him. The woman was carrying him in a blanket. Absolutely, but I was so incensed I called him and got his personal voicemail at his work and left him a message saying, Rick, obviously you don't know the meaning of drag that usually pertains to feet being dragged along the ground, scraping and all that. I'll tell you, from what I hear, he knows the word, meaning of the word drag and it's got more to do with his clothing than it has to do with being uh, yanked. But I, I was determined and I watched and then he came back an hour later and said he was, he was being carried. Because what happened was when that INS agent came out with him, she was pulled behind the bush, but you couldn't see it on some channels. At a different angle, you can see somebody was behind the damn bush. Yeah. And they pulled the lady, and she luckily kept Eliana. Somebody her was behind her bush. Someone was behind the bush all the while. Yeah. And it wasn't uh, yeah. Al Gore, but you know. It might have been Janet. Watch out. Okay, have a great day, pal. <laughs> <All right. laughs> so Janet was uh, lurking behind her bush. No wonder she was moving so fast. Five, six, seven. <laughs> Uh, yeah, the woman said, it's getting to be kind of a shaky situation over here. Open that damn van door and let's get out of here. Let's blow this joint. Also heard that left last week. Yeah, I'm on. Let's blow this joint. Oh, yeah, marijuana, baby. That's what's killing America. Got to get those, got to get that war against drugs going. That's going to be our poll question for tomorrow. Which is the more, which is worse? Which is more dangerous, marijuana or alcohol? We'll use that poll question for tomorrow. Is there any contest? Just, just like the governor of New Mexico on 60 Minutes last night said, he said, you know, cigarettes are bad for you, too. I don't encourage anybody to smoke cigarettes. You've got to be crazy to smoke. But does that mean we put people in jail for smoking cigarettes? And, of course, uh, whoever was doing the reporting was a little, little, little bit like that. Only in California. Oh, they put you in jail for smoking in a non-smoking place? Wait till Rudy Giuliani gets wind of that. He likes that idea. Rudy and the stormtroopers. Here's a lady in Pembroke Pines. Hello. 
Neil? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, um, I just wanted to say that they keep saying that they were negotiating when the when the INS officers came in. Yeah. But the, apparent, they they had said that the negotiations had failed by 4 a.m. Right. They, I think they were just playing chicken with Janet Reno. Mm-hmm. And, uh, Janet <laughs> That's a good way of play. putting it. That's right. And uh, she said, okay, you want to play that game, uh, we'll do it. Exactly. And then they realized that she wasn't going to flinch, and they just went and said, oh, okay, okay, let's talk some more. Mm-hmm. And she said, forget it. Right. right. You know, so, and anyway, I also wanted to mention that I really get upset to see my flag upside down and being ripped and... You know, they they think freedom is you can do whatever you want. That's not what freedom is. Yeah, freedom yeah. freedom to them means they make up the laws, they go along, exactly. whatever, whatever is expedient for them. Exactly. Okay, well, have a great day, sweetheart. Thanks for listening. We'll survive. Bye. We'll make it through, baby. Oh. One way or the other, we'll survive. Oh. This song, Gloria Gaynor. We showed her. Oh. About her. Gloria, how about Gloria Stefan? She's quoted in the paper. You notice I stuck a thing over her puss on this, so it's got all the quotes from the various uh, assholes on there. I stuck something over her puss because I might have eaten lunch. That cup of soup, by the way, was pretty uh, bad. Four minutes before noon at 5.60, WQM, if you're car... All right. Thank you. And good day. And good day. 1201 at 5.60, WQM. Now, here's some interesting stuff from the Newsweek website that somebody faxed to me. It says, by Thursday, the Justice Department had picked two possible times for a raid. The early hours of Saturday morning or Monday morning, Good Friday and Easter, were deemed the wrong days to invade deeply religious Little Havana. Reno worried about the PR implications of seizing the child from his bed in the dead of night, but law enforcement officials wanted to move in when the crowds outside the bungalow were small. Reno's team also wanted surprise. At Waco, the Branch Davidians had known the feds were coming. In Miami, this Justice Department also feared a violent reception. The fiery Maris Gra- uh, Crazy Ass, who had been hospitalized at least eight times for stress, had told some community relations workers that if the feds came into the house, they could be hurt. Rumors swirled about snipers in the neighborhood and old Navy SEALs from the Cuban-American community threatening to play commando. So if there's anybody out there after uh, hearing that who's still uh, criticizing that they came in armed to the teeth and ready for whatever may uh, be laying away, that's the way you do it. Hate to break the news to you, that's the way it's done. Period. No questions asked. No leaving things to chance, especially in a crazy place like Miami. Here's a great fact. It says, uh, why did Cubans burn the tires in the streets? Because the tires were useless without inner tubes. Oh! And it says, Steve Thomas and Neil Rogers, God, go leave school. Nice going there, sir. Let's see, here's one that says, uh, let's get to vote Alex Pinga Pequena out and to vote for Mr. De La Portilla, Miguel De La Portilla, who's also a, uh idiot, but nevertheless, he's a different idiot. You know, at least it's a message anyway. Okay, whatever you want, sir, good luck to you. I'm not voting. Let me say it again. After seeing Al Gore's performance on Larry King uh-huh. on uh, whatever night that was, no way. Absolutely, positively, no way I would vote for either one of those uh, jackasses. No wonder Ralph Nader's getting some support. Ralph Nader, crush the old fart. Who's still trying to fix the goddamn Edsel? Nobody told him it's too late. Yeah, he's still trying to get those fan belts straightened out on the 60 Corvair. It's a little late, Ralph. They're not making them anymore, sweetheart. Yeah. But he means well, you know. And at least he's not one of the above. Al Gore and George W. You can have them both. If you uh, like them, uh, more power to you. Have a great life with both of them. We wound up with 775 votes on that website. On that poll question before we put up the new one. You think the amount of force that was used to extract Alien was appropriate or excessive? 672 said appropriate, 86.7%. Excessive, only 103, 13.2%. And the last tweet on Beasley at 1130 was eight and a quarter. <coughs> Anybody got a quarter? No. Okay, let's uh, move along here. North Miami Beach, hello. Hello? Yes, sir. Yeah, hi, Neil. Uh, I am a uh, Hispanic, okay, I am not a Cuban, and um, I am sick and tired of the part of population, the Cuban population that comes to this country, okay, and wants to change the country that gave them food, okay, the country that took them when they were drowning because no other country in the world would take them, okay, they just want to make their own laws, and there's, there's a very large part of the Hispanic population, okay, contrary to what these uh, right-wing nuts say, okay, that disagrees with them, yeah. okay? We want to come to this country and live under your laws. That's why we chose to come here. When you, go to, when you come to my home as a guest, okay, 
you don't tell me what to serve you, correct? Right, that's right. You eat whatever. If you like something more, you eat more. If you like it less, but, but you can, less. can I tell you right. something that was a problem from the beginning, and that is that in bending over backward, I think this is where Janet made a mistake. bad mistake. In other words, she allowed the family to negotiate as if somehow they had the right to be dictating the rules, and of course they didn't have any such right, especially after they revoked custody. You know, it got, it got to a point where Lázaro González, who, him, and, and that not Maria Slesis, okay, are the only two responsible, okay, that, that they had to, that the INS had to break into that home, okay. Uh, it got to a point where he just got this idea, ill-advised by those attorneys. By the way, who are all those attorneys now? The what attorney, is the attorney no du money? jour. What, I noticed they had now? a different attorney every day. There was a new one that came out of the world every single day. Right. And, and the thing is, okay, it got to a point where he really believed it, that that this country doesn't have laws. You know, I, I was talking to, to people who were telling me, hey, listen, you know, I've lived in this country long enough to know that things are postponed, things are done in a way where uh, they want to talk it out, but one good day, they're just going to barge in there and it's going to say, it's over. Yeah. You know, and, I think, and I think they did a happened. magnificent well, job. Thing is, I think they did uh, a spectacular job. And the only, the only you know, they, right. uh, poor Janet, she just can't catch a break. If it weren't for the AP, like I said before, the AP photographer slipping in the side door there and the, uh, the invisible uh, mother letting him in the door, there, there never would have been that photograph and uh, they wouldn't have had the propaganda to use. But now they keep brandishing that photograph around. See, it was violent, it was this, and bada, bada, and a kid was traumatized. He looks uh, fine to me right now. He looks like he's doing better than he has in five months. And another thing I want to say, uh, Neil, is this. I'm, I'm, I'm an atheist, okay? So I, I will uh, preface it. Uh, all these people that were saying that this is little Jesus and this is a miracle right. baby, what does that mean, that little Jesus is a communist? Because he's going back now. So, so what does that tell us? I'll have to ask Mary. <laughs> have a great day, Paul. Okay, Neil. Yeah, see, and that's another thing, underplayed by the local media because it's too embarrassing. They don't want to tell you the real nature of these scumbag banana boat people down there in Little Havana, the so-called Miami family, with the Virgin Mary on the window and the note that Lazaro passed to his sister Jean about how old Fidel was going to use the kid as a human sacrifice and a satyria. That, I mean, we're talking about people who are like from the Stone Age. And what does the media refer, refer to? Oh, the Miami family. The My Lazaro and the Miami family. Like, these are respectable people. Are they respectable people? No. No, they're low-life, uh, superstitious, uh, mumbo-jumbo, uh, whatever the hell you want to call it. Mumbo-jumbo sounds good to me. Don't that sound good? Uh -huh. I like some... Uh, how about some mumbo-jumbo? Or some uh, mumbo-gumbo sounds good. Better than that crappy cup of soup. God, was that bad. Yeah, but they're cheap. They're bad. Here's Hollywood. Hello. How you doing, Neil? Great. Let me tell you something. They did hand. They used excessive force when they did that. They don't go. In, they don't do raids like that when they go into criminals' houses. Uh, they don't. When even Joe Giuliani said on O'Reilly Factor last night, when the mob. Even Joe Giuliani, who's Rudy there? Giuliani. Oh. When they do a mob, mob well, thank raid. God, thank God that the New York City Police Department doesn't use excessive force. Thank you. Eight minutes afternoon at 560. See what you are, sir, is another one of these young parrots. You hear some jackass, some jackbooted jackass on the air make some kind of a comment, and right away you're running around repeating it, just like the NRA people, you know. Just like Bob Smith, just like Bob Graham, repeating the same tired old rhetoric. You don't know what the hell you're talking about. And if you would watch a little more than watch that fascist Rudy Giuliani on there, you would see the, all, all the, uh, they've had a whole parade of people on there, experts with the INS and the FBI, and they've all said, this is, this is a standard procedure. This is the way that it's done. You got it? No. I didn't think so. Just like Channel 4 doesn't get it. Goodbye, Channel 4. Don't take it personally unless you want to. We just don't like you, okay? We don't like you. We like Gary Nelson. Who else do we like at Channel 4? We like our friend Bob Soper. Anybody else over there we like? Come on, think fast. They changed so quickly. Well, no, nobody else. No. no, we don't like anybody else. Over. No. We used to like our good friend John Deutschbag. He was great. Uh -huh. He's gone. How about Michelle? No. no. Nine minutes afternoon at 560. Yeah. Holy Mackinac! This is Joe Bow on the voice of the Toronto Maple Leafs, and you're listening to the hockey authority, Neil God. New from Written Go Records. Things, baby, things, Simon and Garfunkel. I am Simon and Garfunkel. It's 
Satan's Baby sings Simon and Garfunkel in stores now from Rinko. 1214 at 560 WQM. I've got 75,000 pages of fact stuff here, all of which is very interesting, by the way, and all of which are reinforces my opinions, which I've already expressed, and I ain't changing. Here's our final totals, by the way. We had 795 votes. Our poll question was, do you think the amount of force used to extract Alien was appropriate or excessive? Appropriate, 687. That's 86.5%. Excessive, 108. 13.5%. And, of course, people out there who uh, would disagree with me are saying, well, that's your audience, Neil. And you know what? That's right. That's my audience. And as much as we complain very often about the call-in audience, it goes to show that the listening audience, we've got some people with their heads screwed on straight. Uh -huh. Thank goodness. Here's Aventura. Hello. Yeah, hey, Neil. Good morning. Yes, sir. Good evening. Uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> um, just some random thoughts. Uh, number one, all three women, Marilasis, uh, Sister uh, Disgusting Jean, yes. and uh, Janet, are all childless. So how come she's picking on Janet for not having children when she doesn't pick on... Uh, Sister Jean, Jean, yeah, because, boy, you talk about suspect. Yeah, I mean, she has a flock, maybe. Sister Jean ain't getting none. No, of course not. They well, I don't know. There's a house full of women living there. Leave you. Anyway, uh, secondly, uh, American Airlines, why do they treat kidnappers the way they do when, you know, they give them special treatments, let them out the back door, et cetera, et cetera? What do you mean by that? Well, they they got on. In yeah, but, but don't, you got to know that that was all arranged. I mean, there were, there were people higher up than American Airlines uh, pull those strings. Well, perhaps. See, these people aren't just going there as, as the Miami family, just, you know, kind of on, on a company. You notice they had the whole entourage with them there on the plane, including the fishermen, by the way, who never disappears, no matter where you look. If you go to take a leak in that house 6 o'clock in the morning, he's in the toilet, the watching guard. Everywhere you go is the fisherman. Yeah, well, maybe he and Marilisa should have some kids, you know? Oh, God, what yeah. a thought that is. That would Man. be interesting. They, they, uh -huh. They'd have voice uh, with pure gravel. What a great, what a great ad campaign for forced sterilization. Yeah. Right. Uh, a, a Sanchez uh, piece. Uh, during the, about a week or so ago, during the negotiations, there was a point when uh, Greg Craig came on and asked the press to back off. Mm -hmm. And Sanchez's great remark at that point was, well, I'm a member of the press, and my comment is, yeah, this is the biggest story of the year, like, ha, ha. Yeah, like I'll show you, yeah. Yeah, that, that was a, another good Sanchez. In addition to which, can anybody tell me, including Rick Sanchez, why this is the biggest story of the year? Is it just because the media decided it was such a big story? Because I can't think of any other reason why. Mm, they say it is. Oh, yeah, that's a good point. Okay, have a great day. Thank you. See ya. They say it is, so it must be so, right? Oh! Yeah. Like I tell you, you people with your own brain out there who like to do a little bit of your own thinking, just because the media tells you this is important and because they keep banging on it and banging on it and yanking on it and twisting it and pulling it, uh, that doesn't make it important. It is not important. For us, of course, we got, you know, as usual, we got the crappy luck that we have to live right in the middle of it. It's happening right in the midst, right in front of our puss, as usual, but we ought to be used to that by now. Here's a lady in Hialeah. Hello. Hi, Neil. Yes, this is my first time calling, so if I sound a little nervous, you'll understand. I understand. But I agree with the previous callers about our flag being the way it's displayed upside down. Now, these people came here for freedom. Our flag stands for liberty and justice for all. And I feel that if these people want to display this flag upside down, they should be citated for this by the local... I think they should government. be citated right away. You're right. Yeah. There's no reason for that. And it's our tax dollars that are paying for this whole damn business. Damn right. Damn straight. Right. That's my full sentiment. Okay. Take two and call me in the morning. Okay. Calm down. See ya. Bye-bye. <laughs> She's a little bit worked up, but why the hell not? 5670560. Let's see, here's, I have it directly from an officer on the scene that Ramon Salo Sanchez was injured from the officer's watch band, which broke when he shoved Ramon to the ground. The video shows Ramon attempting to form his human chain, clearly defying the federal marshals there to carry out the law as seen by the president of the U.S., attorney general, etc., and so on. Tell the listeners the truth. He was scratched by a watch band. Oh. <laughs> pussy, pussy, pussy. Scratched by a watch band. One of your people. Oy. And one of mine. Oy. See, I said it before you did. Kai Cater. 5670560, oh, pound 560 on the AT&T wireless line. It's a big story. It's a big story. Believe us. You believe us? No. Well, it's a big story. Not that the media would exploit you, understand. There's Brittany, by the way. Baby, all I need is time. 
Let's see if you guys would concentrate a lot harder on Britney than worrying about crap like this. Like, I like all those punks out there. That, that's what really breaks my heart. I can understand the beginning was all the old toothless crowd. But all you punks out there, you 18 and 20 and 25-year-old punks that are out there participating in this and driving around in your cars, having a party in the street and in your pants, what, what is wrong with you guys? It's a mitzvah. Oh. Here's a lady in, <laughs> a lady in Miami. Hello. Hi, Neil. Stick to this Spanish. Yes, ma'am. Hi, Neil. Uh, I want you to know that there are some Cubans out here that think totally different. And All I agree right. with you. And I agree with you 100%. This is a, a, a real show that they're doing here. Uh, I blame Carollo and Penela. Carollo, yes. Those are the first jerks that are, are down here in Miami. I also blame the family. They had no right to keep that child here. He belonged to his father. And it's up to the father where he wants to live, you know. They talk about democracy. They talk about freedom. I have tried to call the Spanish radio stations. They will not allow me to speak out. Uh, they hang up on me. They call me a communist. They How do you like that? You know, and then they talk about democracy. Uh, have you seen anybody on TV saying anything different than what they want them to say? They do not allow it in Miami. So why are they talking about, you know, only Cuba having uh, no democracy and no freedom? This is ridiculous what they're doing down here. And I personally blame... Uh, the mayor Carollo, he was on um, the Spanish radio this morning uh, saying that he was going to investigate the police department because of what they're doing. I think they're doing an excellent job. He, he just, arrest he just, everyone he's, he's just licking his wounds. He's just a sore loser because they didn't let him in on it because they knew that the minute they let him in on it that uh, he would spill the beans. Well, he couldn't, they can't trust him. That's right. They can't trust any of them. And uh, yes, I am sure there were people there armed. I know my Cuban people. I know how they act. And, uh, you know, it's, it's totally disgusting, but I want you to know that there are some of us that do respect this country, do respect the laws here. Uh, thank Janet Reno and the president for doing what they did. I only wish they would have done it earlier. And uh, thank you for having your, your show and for allowing me to, um, to speak my piece. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Bye-bye. 5670560, five, pound 560. What happened to some of these uh, CDs, by the way, George? Could be just my uh, huh? I didn't take them away. That don't impress me much. Isn't that the name of that thing, that Clinton thing that I want to play? I don't know what the real name of it is. Huh? Sure it is. I couldn't find it. You couldn't find it? Oh my God! I'll oh, well, that's it. called a um, address to the women or something like that. Is it in here? No. Here's hey, a, I was busy last week. There's a lady in plantation. Hello. Hello, Neil. Yeah, I've been waiting all day. Hello. Yes. Hi. We missed you very much. I know. Um, I wish I could say the same. <laughs> Don't take it personal. You know, for somebody who's been watching this Elian, uh, to me, the icing on the cake would have been, once they got Elian safely in the van, right. they would have gone back in for Mary and Because I would have loved to have seen her come out kicking and screaming. I would love to have seen her and little Lazaro come out in handcuffs because they, they both belong in jail. And, of course, a lot of the people well, in this town don't understand. She has to go to the hospital every two seconds because she fainted in front of the camera. She... She didn't have to run to the hospital after they took Ellie and right. ran to the airport. And the same woman who couldn't fly because she was too emotionally distraught when they demanded that they fly the kid to Washington. Right. Now all of a sudden she flew up there with no problem at all. Wait till she comes to her senses and realizes that all she did was give Juan Miguel an extended vacation. Wait till she sees where he's going to live in yeah. the most opulent area of Maryland. Of the mm -hmm. So beautiful and secluded. Yeah. And, and they aren't going to be able to get anywhere. Go back they are going to be able to get anywhere in there. And, you know, maybe uh, Senator Bob Graham and Bob uh, Smith, these guys, think that they're going to get them in on, uh, at least inside the gate at Andrews Air Force. Once they move over to that other compound, they're not going to get within uh, 100 yards forget of there. Forget about it. Right, forget, forget about, about it. Forget about it. Right. Um, the uh, other thing I, I did want to say was when, when you're away, and I, I try to listen to George, but I do want to tell George this is your audience and we really, really love you a lot. And when he talks about you, especially when he says, when he, old, rips me an when ass, he yeah. says old man, oh, there's yeah. just something that digs in me about yeah. that. And also, you are the only one that can get away with Jewish jokes. I'm Jewish. Uh, Cuban jo Whatever kind of jokes you make. Well, I'm not even ashamed to be Jewish is what I'm hearing. Ex well, you know, he just doesn't get it because he's going to, I don't know, he's like the Mary Elisa's of all this. Just tell him. You know something? Have you ever seen the two of them together? 
<laughs> he's not the surrogate here. But um, we just really don't like it when he knocks you because this is your audience. And well, cut it out, George. Quit knocking my him. ass. And the rest of you, too. That's right. Good. Okay, have so, a great day, sweetheart. All right, so just tell him that. Don't call you an old man because we don't like it. Okay. All right. Happy Pesach. Bitch. I, I, I didn't finish. I was going to say that. Five, six, so she's nice, and you're picking on her just because she's Jewish. There's your anti-Semitism running uh, she's through Jewish? the form as usual. That's what she just said. She's a Jewess. Something like that. Hey, you don't have to be Jewish to enjoy a good cigar. Although, of course, a lot of Jews with a lot of money, they put a big cigar in their puss, and they sit back and put their feet up on the desk, and they sit back and think, hi, isn't it great to be Jewish? I'm not even ashamed of it. Play by play is right here. Murray Sports! Sports Radio 560. QAM. This is a bunch of hooey. Wow. Hey, how you doing, honey? <laughs> this is Bill Clinton, the president of the United States. This is my, my state of the women address. <laughs> I've known a few girls who thought they were pretty hot, but Billy's here to tell you that girl, you're not. <laughs> they used to wear makeup and rip away pants, but when they looked at me, they were under my trance. Whoa! Paula Jones, you got a new nose. <laughs> that don't impress me much. <laughs> well, you got the brain, but have you got the touch? Now don't get me wrong, well, I think you're all right. But that will keep me warm in the middle of the night. <laughs> that don't impress me much. <laughs> Let's move along, shall we? She had a tape recorder that she kept on her phone. And after she ate steak, she would bury the bone. She got herself some lipo and a tummy tuck. But she still as ugly as a hockey puck. Whoa! Linda Tripp got some surgery. That don't impress me much. Well, you got the brain, but have you got the touch? Now, don't get me wrong, yeah, I think you're all right. But that won't keep you up in the middle of the night. That don't impress me much. <laughs> You lost 40 pounds. That don't impress me much. <laughs> well, you got the brains, but have you got the touch? Now, don't get me wrong. Well, I think you're all right. But that won't keep me warm in the middle of the night. <laughs> that don't impress me much. Senator from New York. That don't impress me much. <laughs> well, you got the brains, but have you got the touch? Bye bye at five sixty QM. So anyway, here's Bob Smith holding up that egg. It looks like he just pulled it out of his rectum. Wow. Anyway, some amazing stuff coming over the fax machine. Well, first of all, you know Tom Delay, that fascist uh, right wing Republican, went on TV yesterday said there was no warrant in the case and that they didn't get a search warrant. Well, guess what? Joe Lockhart says it's factually not true, easily knowable if you're not trying to play politics. 
and they showed the warrant, they showed the whole stuff on TV. If you if you wanted to see the truth, if you just don't want to play hysterical politics and pander, which the Republican Party is just obsessed with now. Obsessed with. Not to mention, of course, good old Democrats like Bob Graham and the Mayor Pinga Pequena and a few others. But here comes the peace de resistance. Here's something that I had missed. And thanks very much for faxing this to me. I don't I, You can't even keep track anymore of which articles these are from, but nevertheless. It says, ironically, the lasting image of the raid, a helmeted agent with his weapon facing Alien, may exist because Reno herself insisted during the planning of the operation that the photographer not be obstructed, according to a participant in the planning requested anonymity. Top officials knew the Gonzalez family had an arrangement with photographer Alan Diaz to let him into the house. That's why he went to the side door and Mama C to let him in. Some federal officials wanted him shoved aside so we could not snap pictures. Reno vetoed that idea. We have nothing to hide, she said, according to that participant. She reportedly insisted during the planning the photographer not be obstructed. So they knew that he was in there, that he was being used by the family, that he was a shill, and that he would take whatever photographs he could to put it in their worst light, which he did a great job of that, by the way. And uh, she, they could have stopped that. Did they stop it? No. No. So there you go. Thank you very much, because that puts the whole thing with the, that picture in better perspective and how it uh, came to be. Came to uh, pass, just like that Easter egg, Bob Smith. And isn't it interesting that this big, fat tub of crap senator from New Hampshire has got this great interest in something happening so far away from up there? Isn't that kind of strange? Uh -huh. Yeah. And has had from the beginning. Don't you remember way back in the early days he was down here having conversations with Alien in Sanskrit? Because they don't know how to pick a party in New Hampshire. Here's a mobile in Hollywood. Hello. Hey, Neil. Yes, sir. A F and men to everything you're saying today, man. You're right on the mark. It's, it's great. As usual, yes. And, and the lady right before the break kind of stole a little of my thunder. I, I was going to say the same thing about they should have also went back in there yeah. and arrested Lazaro, Mary's oh, lady. Can, can, can you imagine? And, the, and the can you imagine what carrying on there would be now about that? Uh, well, they would deserve it, though, you know. And uh, this, and you know, I got up kind of late Saturday morning. Around 10, 11 o'clock, I put my TV on. Yeah. I flipped it through the channels, and I stopped on 10 because they were they had the uh, uh, pictures on of the stuff going on in the streets. Mm -hmm. And I was just so pissed because I'm sitting there watching people literally taking stuff, throwing it in the street. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, I think the Miami police should get the tapes from these uh, TV stations and look through the tapes and arrest every one of those assholes that did anything that was unlawful, like throwing stuff into the fire. And how all how about the one stuff. guy with the tire business that had his whole joint uh, burned down and uh, destroyed? He's out of business. The guy's uh, destroyed. And he says, why did they do this to me? I'm Cuban. What, what, what are they picking on me for? It doesn't make any sense. I, I, I'll never understand it. What, whatever group it is, you get mad and you're going to go and burn down your own neighborhood. What sense does that make? Amen. And, and, and Castro's sitting back in Cuba just laughing his ass off. Dude, he's doing, these people, like somebody said before, they're doing exactly what they're, Castro they're, and everybody else they're do. The they only, do. They're the only people left in the world that can make him look good. Unbelievable. And have a great day. I love you, buddy. Okay. Oh, here's another fact about the watch band. It says Ramon Sanchez claims he was hit with the butt end of an assault rifle, but the officer was there said he scratched his head on the officer's watch band, which broke. He also claims he was knocked unconscious for a few minutes from the scratch of a watch band. The video clearly shows the officers immediately outside the front door had no assault rifle in their hands. The man is a lying wuss. Tell the world the truth, Ramon. You certainly don't need a turban to keep four stitches closed on the side of your head. This man is an asshole. He's an asshole. That's what it says here. He's an asshole. That's what it says with 4,522 exclamation points. I'm sorry, I recounted. It's 4,529 exclamation points. Thank you very much, sir. Scratched with a watch band and pussy, 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 he's got a turban on his head. How do you like that? A juban with a turban on his head. A juban with a turban. What a great ring that's got to it, huh? Here's a mobile implantation. Hello. Mobile implantation. Going once. Going twice. Gone. Well, hey, it's break time anyway. 22 till 1 at QAM. This is 560 QAM. One minute for that new house you wanted and lost the title to your car while in Las Vegas, Bear. It's just a picture of a loser <laughs> face down in the gutter, stapled right on the bears. <laughs> Only in the Banana Republic, baby. Only in Miami. Hello. I'm Linda Tripp. Recently, I had $30,000 worth of cosmetic surgery done on my face. People have been asking me lately how I feel. Well, to tell you the truth, I feel great. 
I feel like I could touch the sky. No more dark circles underneath these beautiful eyes. People compliment me on my brand new nose. I put my hair in pretty pink ribbons and bows. Yes, because I'm a sexy woman since my new surgery. I think I'll have the judge over for dinner and tea. I'll turn my head, he'll feed me grapes, and then we'll burn those silly tapes. I could stand lose a little weight, but I feel great. It's a... Uh, yes, thank you. 1243. Shut up, Linda, bitch. Anyway, here's Arthur from Boca Faxes and says that Brian Gubble did a good coverage of the On Fiesta. I even mentioned that before I went on vacation that he had done uh, in the interviews that he was one of the few in the media that was holding their feet to the fire, the family... And even though I ordinarily can't stand Brian Gumbel because he's an arrogant uh, spook, he is. He's a smug spook. I, I dislike him intensely. But he did a good job. Nice going there, Brian. Oh. We'll see you again soon because I don't watch that show. Here's a fact that just says, shame on the Miami distant relatives for dragging the community into their psychotic delusions. Shame on Mas Santos, Basulto, and the other leaders of the exile community for exploiting Elion. Shame on the lawyers for their careless manipulations, which caused great stress in the community. Shame on the relative few that chose to cause disorder in the community by trashing the streets with themselves and burning fires. Shame on mayors Carroyo and Pinellas for their lack of leadership by waiting till the evening to have a unified press conference to call for calm. Where was the community relations board? Thank you, Janet Reno in the Justice Department. Thank you, Doris Meisner in the INS. And thank you, Chief O'Brien oh! in the Miami Police. Oh! Nice job, Miami Police. Great job. Not a good job. A great job. They weren't putting up with no Schmidt, I'll tell you that. And just remember what Mayor Carroyo said. Oh, this is Miami. This is a peaceful city. Yeah, right. You're an asshole, Joe. Always were an asshole. At least you're consistent. The only one that made him look a little bit better was Maurice Ferre because he was like uh, with a, a thicker... No, no, I'm talking about the way he speaks. Like semi-literate, like... Uh, uh, Ferre always sounded like he had about two and a half pounds of cow crap in his mouth when he talked. Carroyo sounded like only about a pound and three quarters. And more crooked. Oh, I'd say at least yeah, nine times more crooked. Here's Boca. Hello. Yeah, Neil, I might have clarification on all this um, report with the... Uh, with the uh the wound in the ear, on the ear of that guy? Yes. The AP reporter's uh, film, one of the films he lost, has a picture with that uh, Cuban uh, group leader with Rosaro in the bedroom. Yeah. And they didn't catch that one, but he was giving him a rim job. And uh, Okay, good. I hope they had a good time. Oh, he said Rimmer was in there? Is that what he said? Uh -huh. Yeah. He said Rimmer done it. 5670560, oh, pound 560 on the AT&T line. Let's give away some Panther playoff tickets. What do you say? Oh! Well, for some other year. Here's Kendall. Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. Are we on? It sounds like us. Thank you, Neil. How are you doing? Great. Let me just tell you super quick. I'm a little nervous. I'm a long time listener. Um, I, I've, I've talked to you, I think, only once before. I want to first say, real quick, George did a good job. Um, in spite of what even the even that he was ripping me an ass and calling me the old man, etc. Uh, he was old, an old man. Fat old, he likes you. He likes fat you. old fag, he said. No, no, no. It's all good. I just want to say, and um, forgive me if I'm a little nervous. Wait till the next car payment comes through. What is it? I said, that, forgive me if I'm a little nervous. Don't uh, keep saying wife, that. No. Don't keep saying that. Okay. This is like therapy for us. I live in Kendall, as, as, you, as you noticed. And uh, uh, let me just tell you, my wife's on the line, and she, she's American-born. I am an American naturalized. I hate it when people use those hyphens, Colombian-American, Cuban-American. Yeah. And we're defending uh, the, the, the flag. Uh, we're flying a flag. Uh, my neighbor is doing that as well. And uh, for the past couple of days, it's been crazy down here. Everybody, some people are used as our flying their Cuban flag, which is disgusting. And amen to everything people have said. Uh, we want people, Americans, in fact, some Americans in our neighborhood have started uh, flying their flags, which I think is a good demonstration that this is still America, all the way down to Key West. And oh, hey, well, they love the flag, uh, the flag down in Key West. Oh, well, that's another subject, but right. I guess you're right. <laughs> and one super quick point, you know. Senator Smith, shame on him. Where were where, where, where all these Republicans where Diallo was shot in New York or, or the Mexicans in L.A. with the, the, the police department was right. killing them with Rodney Paul King. Bennett. That's right. Where were they with all these other important things? I mean, really significant, amazing stories were taking place. Nobody heard uh, anything from these bastards. They were How in the closet Giuliani? with the, uh, Donato. How about Giuliani, Neil? He's, he's outraged of, of the violence. You know, you know something? Heinrich Himmler would be embarrassed by Rudy Giuliani. That's what a Nazi he is. Exactly. I actually made that comparison. It's like Hitler saying, oh, oh what are they doing to those Jewish people? 
<laughs> that's right. It is. I think that's a good analogy. Last quick point. Don't tell Norman Bremen that, though. He uh, doesn't have a sense of humor. Exactly. Sorry. I, I just said about Carollo. He's just looking for an excuse to fire that police chief. That, mm -hmm. that uh, I forgot his name. Uh, O'Brien. O'Brien. He was just saying boy. this morning on TV that he was appalled that so many people were arrested. Shame on him. Shame on him. Because he's just trying to... He said that he could fire him if he could. That he would fire him if he could. I think that's outrageous. But he, he, number one, he can't. And number two, if he tries to, uh, he'll be out. He'll be out in a heartbeat. Well, let's hope so. Uh, Charlotte, you want to say something? Sorry. Neil, you're God. I thank you. You're saving me so much money in anger management therapy today. Thanks, we If it wasn't for you, I'd go bananas. God bless me. I was up by Coyote yesterday, and the number of Cuban flags flying on people's cars was disgusting. I nearly started crying. It's about time that people in this city realize, number one, where they're living, and number two, you can't be American one day and Cuban the next. It's well, you know, one or the other. Well, you know, when I was watching in Amsterdam, I was watching on CNN on Saturday, the scene in front of the house, which they were still all there, which I have no idea why, but there was one uh, placard there that had a hammer and sickle on there, you know, to yeah, yeah. Was, was their commentary about what the government had done. And I thought to myself, why, why are they making fun of the hammer and sickle? That, that was the uh, flag of a communist country, and the flag that they're flying right next to it is also the flag of a exactly. communist country. Perfect. Point, Neil. And how about when they kissed the flag, when they got that verdict from that, uh, from that, uh, those oh. in Atlanta? Oh, they I, were I, kissing the American flag all over the place. The, 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 I'll never forget as long as I live, this green-shirted, green-toothed old Cuban guy with glasses. Yeah. Getting, getting down on his America, thank yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, America. They only won their way. That's, that's it. There's no middle ground. Yeah. They won their way. It's disgusting. Well, the you know we, something? We, they did they didn't get their way, and it's a great day for America and a great it. day go, for freedom. Go, John Arino. And we're going to school just because we're in school. We're living here. The moment we graduate, we're moving back to the U.S. Okay. And I'm proud to be an American. I'll be right on your Neil? tail. Yes. Neil, uh, Taylor Kalen calls. He wants to nod her to know his 15 minutes are up. Okay. See ya. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Bye, Neil. Thank you, Neil. Okay. Yeah, your 15 hours, your 15 weeks are up, Donato, you jackass. Oh, he's an asshole. The fisherman. You think the Virgin Mary was everywhere on the on the bank building on a goddamn mirror? She's a piker compared to Donato Dalrymple. This guy was everywhere. Every time you'd see him, I, the, the pictures from the plane. They're on the plane trip up there. They're stalking this kid. He hasn't been out of their arm for like uh, 12 hours yet, out of their grasp, and they're stalking. They're they're, they're they're chasing him. And here's the goddamn fisherman is on the plane. You think he bought his own ticket? No. Oh, what a joke that is. He couldn't buy a goddamn bus ticket to Opalaka. The fisherman. You mark my words. Just remember, mark it on the calendar. April 24, 2000. I told you that there, this guy, he'll be in there in a the miniseries. He'll be writing his goddamn memoirs. He'll be in a full feature-length film. He'll probably be playing Cato Kalin when the next OJ movie comes out. At least Cato had enough decency to sleep like in a, a, a little side house, you know, like not in the main uh, drag. And I don't think Kato was ever in the closet. No. Here's a lady in West Palm Beach. Hello. How you doing, Nia? Great. I'm so happy because the boy is with the father. Right. I'm from Colombia. I'm Latin. And I hate Miami only because the Cuban people. That's it. Thank you, and I love you. Okay, I'll see you in Bogota. Okay. Okay. Kali. Say, say to our friends, uh, to, uh, Kali, uh, what's his name? Kali Ocho. Kali Ocho. Five six seven oh five. I have no idea what I'm talking about now. She was just a beautiful. She was a beautiful thing. All you Cubans down there in Dade County, don't take it personally because you know the old saying: if the foo fits, wear it. If you're wearing it. Oh, speaking of the foo fits, I think we had the foo fighters was our uh, crew on a plane coming back from Amsterdam yesterday. One of them was like a dark complected foo fighter. She was. And I, I said to John, I said we don't have to worry about this plane going down because as long as he's on it, it's staying way, uh, way up in the air. Yeah, we were saving on gas. I don't think we were using any fuel. Here's a lady in Cocoa Beach. Hello. Hi. Yes, ma'am. I love you too, Neil. Um, has anybody brought out the fact, and I'm sure they have, but why don't they do it more, that, that Lazaro has had four DUIs. And, so now it's and four? I thought it was only two. Is it four? No, I heard it <laughs> recently. Yeah. Uh, and it was four DUIs. Uh-huh. So the guy probably obviously. I, I heard he had a whole bunch of DUs. <laughs> this is what I heard. What? Right, have a great day. Okay. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the eighteen. Well, she's in Cocoa Beach. She's under a lot of pressure. Uh -huh. Under a lot of stress up there. Uh -huh. Here's a mobile in Hollywood. Hello. Hey, how you doing, Neil? I'm doing good. Yeah, let me just say a couple of points here. I actually wrote them down. 
Um, first of all, I'm proud to be an American today also. I think it's about time. I think Jan Arena handled this thing great, and I was happy about that. And my question is, two questions, actually. I, I, when did this become a Democrat-Republican issue? When did it become that? Yeah, I mean, I, I, because if these Republicans have spent any be, time... Because no, matter, because no matter what, Jan Arena, don't you understand, this is what the Republicans have been doing since the first time Clinton was elected in 1992. They've That's been doing true. this for uh, over seven years now, and That's that is that true. every single thing that they do, they politicize it, no matter what it is, and they try to exploit it for fun and uh, yeah, uh, political and gain. And that's a shame. But the other question is, and, and I was wondering what your opinion on this, I think that uh, Miguel's lawyer should file a, a restraining order against the Miami family. If it comes to that. Can you do that? Sure, why not? Because they're obviously lunatics, don't <laughs> Absolutely. That's, that's and, the best way to describe it. These are lunatic scumbags, the lowest subhuman form of life possible, and the idea that this kid would be better off staying with a family like this is ludicrous. I agree with you. And you are the man, and don't forget it. Have a good day. And have a great life. You see, I'll say it again. If, they, if the courts decide the kid uh, is going to have asylum, he's going to stay here in the country, fine. If the father wants to stay with the rest of the family, that's fine, too. If not, then put this kid like in Peoria somewhere with a nice uh, middle-class, upper-middle-class family. Not in Miami, surrounded by a bunch of exploiters and uh, scumbags. Anyone, anybody out there, no matter what your opinion on a whole deal, who thinks that this kid was better off being put on display every day and being exploited for all these damn uh, hysterical political organizations in Dade County, forget it. Here's Fort Lauderdale. Hello. Hello, Neil. Yes, sir. Hello. Hey, Neil, as a father, I am so happy that the kid is back with his dad. Right. You know, because... What, what pisses me off about the whole thing is that society in general doesn't respect the father's rights as much as they respect the mother's right mm -hmm. to, be, to be with her kids. You no, know, right. if that if that had been a woman, if she, uh, there would have been no question as to whether or not the kid should go back to the mother. Right. Uh, and also, you know, what, what I respect again with uh, Mr. Gonzalez is that well, how come the kid isn't on, t on on video now? You know, how come he's not on TV? In fact, the only the only reason. They came out with the additional pictures yesterday. Was because Maris crazy ass came up with that concocted story about how all oh, it was a fixed. Uh, the picture was uh, not real, and uh, the haircut was different. So they they took some more family pictures just to counteract that uh, propaganda she was spreading. But other than that, you're right. They're, they're finally giving the kids some breathing room. They're getting him out of the public eye. This is what he needed a long time ago, not to be put on display like some kind of a trophy in a, in a, a museum somewhere. Right. Exactly. Uh, now I, I have a drop for you. You know, whenever a uh, Haitian person calls up, you you, you play a drop. Uh, yeah, man. Yeah, man. Let me give you a drop uh, that you can play for a Haitian person, which means uh, what's happening. Uh, hello, sac passe, na boule. Sac passe, na boule. Okay. 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 Bye. No, I'll get that right in there for you. <laughs> what did he say? Yeah, man. Something like that. I think he said some, something about uh, somebody sucks is what he said. Something. Well, I think you may have a good point there, sir. There's a lot of sucking going on. We have uh, open line somewhere. Somewhere it is. 5670560. Pound 560 on the AT&T line. The out-of-town line is open. The rest of the world is very quiet about this, and they're probably over overwhelmed by it, I would think. Uh -huh. Nauseated by it. Uh -huh. Disgusted. Uh -huh. Astonished. It's uh, 1256 at 560 QAM. This is 560 QAM. Hiya, Marge Gesterson from Wauwatosa, Wisconsin here. And I have to take issue with all this hubbub about the Philly cheesesteak at Miami Subs Grill. Oh, I know Miami Subs gets their steak straight from... QAM, Miami. The way I move around when I go to, I call the mambo movement number two. On the toilet seat, I swing and sway to the mambo beat, the radio play. Snowing out a load, and I'm all through. There's just one thing I got to do. A little bit of paper is all I need, so I can make my high knee nice and clean. I don't have 
the push, I'm in control When I'm moving side to side on the toilet bowl I never have to spray, it comes out whole It looks a little like a Tootsie Roll I sway to the left, it's way to the right From cheek to cheek and I'll tell you why Not only are you burning calories But you never ever get a big red ring That's why, big fat guy, who can do the exercise, can have some fun when they do with the mambo movement number two. Hey, look at me, Alan. I'm doing the man, but hey, well, come on, do it. You look like a whale in heat. Shut up and stop it. Get it, get it, get it, get it. Uh, okay, well, get out. Two minutes after one at 560 WQAM. Here's uh, one fact that says there are a total of seven pictures taken by Al Diaz, the AP photographer, during the course of the rescue mission. We, are, we only see the one of the agent with the rifle. The others are hard to find now. I have them all and we'll email them to you if you want. Yeah, we want uh -huh. them. The first picture shows Dalrymple standing at the door of the closet with a boy in his arms looking into the camera as if to say, we're ready. This one shot makes it so obvious the whole thing was staged, along with the fact that Diaz was there by agreement of the Gonzalez's. If Dalrymple was there to hide the boy, he would have been in the closet with the door closed. This was done for the symbolism of the boy being taken away from the very man who pulled him out of the ocean. The second shot shows the two agents entering the bedroom through the door, which was still on the hinges. The next few shots are the ones we're familiar with, with the agent with the uh, rifle, one of them showing the agent looking at the camera, telling Diaz to back off. The last picture is of Dalrymple handing the boy to the agent, and the armed agents leaving the bedroom with the door still on the hinges. The armed agent did not snatch him from Dalrymple. Also, here's a two-page fax from Erasmus. Remember him? Uh -huh. They were sending us those great spy reports from outside the house day after day. We all remember him. Uh -huh. It's a very sad fax. I'm not going to waste my time reading it on the air because we obviously have some disagreement here, which doesn't make me a bad guy or him or both, but nevertheless. Uh, he, what, what Erasmus just doesn't understand is that the majority of people in, uh, who live in this town, uh, we, we don't like Castro, but we're not obsessed with it, and we're tired of being uh, the whole business being used as a weapon against us. No matter what the issue is, no matter what it has to do with, whether it's uh, the Latin Grammys or uh, some performer that wants to come here and sing, no matter what it is, it's always a weapon. And we have to be punished because we don't share the same uh, state of psychosis against Castro and Cuba. We just don't give a crap. Also, he says, does it bother you at all? The boy was terrified and seized from the house at gunpoint. No. No, it does not. No, it does not, because the three minutes worth of uh, sheer terror that they might have been is far outweighed far outweighed by the p potential weeks and months of more brainwashing and bullcrap that was going on every minute inside that house. But at any rate, uh, have a great life, Erasmus, and thanks for your fine work, but then uh, we uh, agree to disagree. Here's another fact that says, you know that Mayor of Penis List is called for a general strike for tomorrow? Well, yes, uh, we are aware of that. Forgot to mention that. Oh, uh, well, uh, yeah, but in your case, let's see if George shows up tomorrow or not, huh? How's that car payment coming, George? Yeah, tomorrow the Cubans, we'll, we'll see how many Cubans show up for work and how many of you stay home tomorrow. A general work strike. And then Wednesday, more peaceful pro, um, uh, demonstrations. As the demonstrations just keep on coming, baby. Oh! Yeah, all the demonstrations all the time here in Dade County. And Erasmus, you're right, a lot of us uh, did move to Broward County and we're proud of it. I lived in Dade County for five, six years, whatever the hell it was. That was long enough to wise up. You once lived in Dade County. Oh, eons ago, but that wasn't by choice. That's just where the La Familia lived. Yeah. See, uh, some of us, uh, you know, I mean, the country's got a lot of problems, and I'm uh, reviled by many of the things that go on in America, but nevertheless, if we're going to claim to be Americans, at least we ought to live in a country, which Dade County is not, Erasmus. I hate to break the news to you, but it is not. It's a banana republic. Here's Miami. Hello. Hi. Yes, sir. Uh, you know, um, I, I want to congratulate uh, Jenna Trino on her decision. I want to congratulate the uh, federal agents on a fantastic, swift job, clean, nobody hurt. Right. And uh, regarding that famous picture that has been circulated around the world mm -hmm. with uh, the agent holding the weapon, etc. Right. Maybe this should serve a notice to all of those who want to break the law that this is what they're going to face. Mm -hmm. uh, that's all the comments I have for today. Okay, thanks. Yeah, they were breaking the law, okay? They were holding him hostage. He was being kidnapped at that point. He wasn't theirs to keep until they decided to turn him over. Don't you understand that? It wasn't their decision to make. 
And when you decide that you're going to go ahead and you're going to do an operation like that, you don't do it half-assed, halfway, and then open up the possibility that there's going to be some kind of a nightmare that you're not prepared to deal with. They were prepared for all possibilities, and that was great. And they let everybody know that they were prepared. And like I've said over and over again, that's the way that these things are carried out. 104 votes so far in today's poll. Which of the following is the biggest asshole? And it's pretty... Uh, Donato Dalrymple, the fisherman, of course, he's uh, 54. He's got 52%. But Maris is crazy ass. He's right on his ass with 40 or 38.4%. Lazaro's only got 10. I could have kind of figured that. Only 9.5%. Because like I said earlier, he's not. He's more like a scumbag. Huh? Yeah, he's just a useless scumbag as opposed to just being... He's an asshole. An asshole. Last trade of Beasley, by the way, eight and one eighth. Oh boy, not looking too good. Is it looking good? No, no, not too great. Eight and one eighth. That means it's almost half of the fifteen fifty that these people were given the opportunity to buy it at on that uh, fateful day back on the eleventh of February. Remember that day? Uh -huh. When thankfully I was on a previous vacation. I remember uh, that that uh, short-haired guy. What was his name? Greg or something or other, standing right in here. But a couple months before this big deal came down, the IP. Oh! And give me a song and dance. But, oh, it's going to uh, open at around 15, but we're confident it's going to go up to 30 or 35 right away. And yeah, ba 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 Did it go up to... Uh... No. No, it's in the toilet. A lot of people around here have uh, lost money. They're never going to see it again. Never going to see it again. It'd be like if somebody told you to invest in that Ask Jeeves thing and bought it at 119 bucks a share and it went down to 29 can you imagine some broker tells you to buy a stock and buy, invest this stock at 119 bucks a share and it's worth 20 Nine. Oh, boy. I'd want to beat him over the head eight or Nine. times with a baseball bat. Same broker, by the way, it's losing all of my money very rapidly. Here's a lady mobile in uh, Fort Lauderdale. Hello. Hello. Yes, ma'am. Hi. Um, my sentiment's exactly what you were saying before. I'm a parent, and if my children were being held hostage, uh, kidnapped, I would want whatever it takes right. to get my children back. That's right. Um, I am so glad that this little boy has been reunited with his father, and I wish them all the best. I hope that... Uh, I, I'm just... I'm, I'm so incensed at the woman, Maris Lacius, that, uh, you know, she holds these ridiculous press conferences and that the news media just goes on. Yeah, they, they, keep, they keep dignifying her by putting her on there, no matter how ludicrous the comments are that she's making, like her assertion yesterday that the photograph was doctored and about the haircut and all this other crazy stuff. You know, people have been, they've been Baker acted and put in straitjackets and dragged away for less than what she had done. <laughs> That's exactly what I was going to say. I mean, she's certifiable. She yeah. needs to be Baker acted. And if the 11th Circuit Court of Appeals, after that display yesterday, could could even consider placing that boy back with them, then yeah. there's something wrong. And then just one thought to leave you with. I think that little baby Yanni, he is really cute. You think maybe we could just keep him? <laughs> uh, maybe Maris uh, Crazy Ass will make a deal. There you go. Have a great day. You too. Bye-bye. Maybe you should get a new puppy. What do you say? Oh! Yeah, it's like uh, Michael Jackson when he had the uh, champion on. He'd get tired when they start getting a little bit older, just like the little kids. When they get a little bit older, he'd get tired of them want a new chimp. He got a little bit tired of uh, <laughs> doubles. Nine minutes after, speaking of Mr. Uh, nine minutes after one at 560 <laughs> WQAM, Seminole Indian Casino of Hollywood is a place you can go and get away from the... Word. That's right. If you're just saturated with this crap, if you just can't stand one more mention of that word, then get in the car and go over anytime you like. The Seminole Indian Casino, because you can win a lot of money there. Maybe two, three, four hundred grand, like a lot of other people have done. And you can do it all in one big shot. Or maybe just a little here, a little bit there. And you, no matter what, you'll have a great time. Four daily sessions of high stakes bingo. 48 round the clock poker tables. There's lightning bingo. They have several weekly poker tournaments all through the day. Daily mini tournaments with various buy ins, rebuys, and nearly a thousand gaming machines where you can plunge your lungs at your heart's content. 24 hours a day, seven days a week, even on Pesach, even on Easter Sunday, even in the middle of this uh, crisis. Seminole Indian Casino on the corner of Sterling and 441, just a couple quick minutes west of the Sterling Road exit of I-95. Acres. The door, and yesterday at the news conference, um, one of the reporters asked her, you know, why do you, why do you feel that this is your son? And she said, I never said that he was my son. But the morning that they raided their house, she stood out in front of all of those people and said, when they came in, it took my kid, mm -hmm. my kid. Yeah, her puppy dog. Exactly. Also, the media, I'm sorry, down here is totally biased. Yeah. Don't watch Channel 7. Channel 7 was the only station that 
found someone to say that the photograph was fake. Oh. <laughs> that, I mean, ser seriously, they do take people and put them in rubber rooms for less than that. Right, exactly. And the final thing I have to say, why is it when any other race goes out into the streets, it's rioting, and when the Cuban-Americans go out into the streets, it's a civil disobedience. Civil disobedience, that's right. Yeah, civil disobedience. Well, you folks need to lighten up a little bit. <laughs> have a great day, sweetheart. All right. Bye-bye. Yeah, see, that's the thing about the picture. That it's just so ludicrous. Basically, what, what they're saying is, oh, no, there's no way that he could have been smiling with his father like that because his father's abusive, his father's a bad guy, he stole two or three freight trains that we know of, and yada, yada, yada. And therefore, there's no way, especially after all the months of intensive brainwashing we did, how could he be smiling with that evil father of his? That's really what they were, she was saying. Had to be doctored. He couldn't really be happy there. And then after they showed the other pictures yesterday, they come out and say, Oh, well, uh, we're glad to see that he's looking good and he's happy. But if that's the case and everything's going on so well, then there's no reason why we shouldn't be let in there. And now the shoe is on the other foot. Here's a father that waited for four months to see his child, who was here for almost three weeks after being promised that he would be able to see him right away and have him in his custody, at least while he was here in this country and the appeals were being heard. And waited and waited and waited and waited and was constantly being told, oh, well, if you want him, you'll have to come and get him yourself and walk through this crowd of crazy people. To which he said, no, I want to see him bad and I want him back in my arms badly, but I'm not that crazy because a dead daddy won't do very much good. Now the shoe is on the other foot and all the Bob Smiths and all the Bob Grahams of the world can't force their way in there to get them to see this kid. They want to see him. Is he still alive? Is he still breathing? Does he have horns growing out of his head? Has he been impaled to the door as a, ca as a Castro Santeria sacrifice, as Lazaro was so concerned about? Let me say it again. Is there anybody in the local media here that's got the chutzpah, got the balls, to really talk about that note that he slipped to Sister Jean, which uh, changed her opinion, by the way? That crazy old bitch? No, nobody wants to talk about that because that would make them look just like the 10th world banana boat people that they really are. Here's Hollywood. Hello. Cuban cockroach. Thank you. <laughs> La cucaracha, whatever that means. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the AT and T line. Now what what does that mean? New Mexico is in the state, or is that like a the the whole state's calling? You. Oh, here's New Mexico somewhere. Hello. Hey Neil, what the hell's going on? Yes, sir. It's the Air Force guy. Remember me? I was stationed in Germany the past four years. Right. Um. Just calling to comment a couple of things. Oh, I'm stationed back in New Mexico. That's where the call's coming from. Saw your governor on uh, 60 Minutes last night. Good guy. He's talking about legalizing marijuana. Oh! I was just talking to George about that off the air, but uh, like we both agreed, he's against the wall by himself. He's uh, not going to do anything. No. But uh, as far as, um, let me talk about this Elyon thing. I'm, I'm Hispanic, not Cuban, but I am married to a Cuban. Oh, boy. My wife, my, no, let me take that back. My mother-in-law. Okay, I had to explain to her because she was up in arms telling me why the hell did these guys go in there with guns and stuff. And I had to explain to this bitch because I'm a cop in the Air Force, right? And I had to explain to her that any standard situation like that of a cop law enforcement going into a house that already has been shown that they are hostile in some way. Our first of all, going to go in with guns. Right. So and, and, they're all, and there already had been some uh, not so veiled threats made that if they were going to come in here, somebody was going to get hurt. Exactly. Exactly. That's my first point. My second point, she asked me, okay, if that's the case, why the hell was that gun in the kid's face? I told her that any, any time a, a law enforcement official is carrying a rifle, the rifle is going to follow his eyes. That's where the, extent, the rifle becomes an extension of his arm and his eyes. So wherever his eyes go, his gun goes. And it just so happens he was looking at the kid, mm -hmm. and that's where the gun with was. His, with his finger far from the trigger, by the way. Right. So I told her basically to go schmuck off, you know what I mean? Good for you. So, uh, in closing, uh, we need some help for Pavel next year. How are they doing? Are they still have a team or what? <laughs> Who, the Panthers? Have a great day, pal. Thanks, man. See ya. How are those Panthers doing? Oh! No comment. No comment. A shameless, gutless performance from everything that I can determine, but nevertheless. 5670560, oh, pound 560 on the AT&T line. Out of town lines are open now, now that we've had our call from New Mexico for the day. 877. What's wrong with that? There's nothing wrong with a good call from New Mexico from a guy who was stationed in Germany who gets around. Oh. At least he's out of here. Nice going, sir. 877-785-6345. We got Hank coming up from Shula State 2 at 2 o'clock. Hank with Al Downing at 5. Talking baseball with Donnie B at 6. Any interest at all? No. Marlins are hot, are you? No. Oh, and the Phillies and the Marlins pregame at 6.30, game at 7 o'clock, 80K after the game at about 10. That's our schedule. We don't have our program director here today, and we are feeling pretty good about it. Oh. Here's Coral Springs. Hello. 
Neil. Yes, sir. Hey, next to you, Janet Reno is God. Yeah. Hey, by the way, this a a Democratic issue came up. If you recall back around Christmas when who but Dan Burton brought him that puppy? Yeah. That's what I think started it all, and then everybody jumped on it. Of course, this is an election year. Now, this isn't the same Dan Burton that had the illegitimate child, is it? Is that yeah, right? I believe it is. Oh. Same way with the same Dan Burton has been trying to get rid of Janet Reno for uh, the last seven or eight years now. Is that the same Dan Burton? Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh, in the Speaker of the House, the old Speaker of the House, uh, Gingrich. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and lastly, uh, I think we've got to quit playing Gloria Estevan music. Playing Everyone. what? Quit playing Gloria Estevan's music. Yeah, you have to start playing it first before you could stop. You're never going to catch me playing it. But there, uh, I'd rather, I'd rather stick a ramrod down. down my throat for five hours than uh, listen to one of her songs. Well, Neil, keep up the good work. Have a great day. Somebody's got uh, has a place to you know vent their frustration. Vent the truth. And God bless you, sir. You hear about Andy Garcia? He was pretty pissed off. He was down there with his wife and Gloria Estefan and Willie Torino and uh, the Taco Bell dog and all those uh, celebrities that one day just before I went on vacation. They were all down there hawking a china. You hear what uh, 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 Vincent? You hear what he had to say? No. Don't ever give an order like that again. That's what he said. Too late. Too late, Andy. You lose. Here's a Pembroke Pines. Hello. Hello, O'Neill. Yes, sir. Uh, I've got a couple of things to say. First, I'd like to say I'm a new time uh, listener. And I'd like to say George's done a good job. He should have a show by himself. On the uh, thing with he the agent... He should be doing a morning show, I think. Yes, uh, on the thing with the agent... Well, now, let's get real. What is this guy supposed to have gone in there with a, with a bouquet of flowers? He should have gone in... That's right. He should have gone there with an SPD tree. bouquet of flowers, right? Right. And then that fisherman, that meat boy, he sold himself out for a suit and a pair of shoes from that guy, Mamando Gutierrez. <laughs> and then we yeah. have that crazy local Corojo mayor. He should resign, not the, not the, uh, the chief... Uh, Whatever his name is, O'Brien. Right. And one thing for Ricky Sanchez, let me tell you, that guy is a sick, sick mama Luke. He's I an asshole. A, I got a thing for him. Check this out. Yeah. Uh, how's my driving? Call Ricky Sanchez, 1 800 hit and run. <laughs> and by you the way, you'll, you'll be pleased. And I tell you, you'll Andy be pleased to know, by the way, that guy. Hero. Okay, that guy is still dead. Okay, and have a great day. He's just all wound up. The guy hit in front of the stadium, Rick Sanchez, he's still dead. Uh -huh. Last time I heard. Uh -huh. I just checked yesterday, he's still dead. Uh -huh. Okay. Damn it. Five, six, seven. We hate you, Rick Sanchez. You're despicable. You're disgusting. You're not fooling anybody. If you want to be a professional Cuban, go right ahead. But don't do it during the newscast, okay? Don't sit there and manipulate and try to twist and turn and rationalize and justify because nobody believes you have no credibility, which is why you're perfectly placed there on Channel 7 News. Rhymes with lose. So you had a call from Brian Andrews, which also rhymes with those things while I was away. I'm, this is on the air. Yeah, on the air. And he said he had heard that I ripped him on the air, which, of course, all contraire, I had uh, said wonderful things that he refused to be manipulated, at least uh, on the air anyway. He might be manipulated off the air, but uh, that's another story. Hey, boy, what's that in your mouth? Why? As they continue trying to slide and twist. I love Channel 4's got another thing they do. The uh, possible return of Alien to the Communist Island. It's never. It doesn't have a name, the Communist Island. Are you fooling anybody over there? Huh? No. No, you're just pandering, shamelessly. And it's not working, by the way. It's not working too good. 26 after 1 at 560 WQM. You may have noticed that the weather is getting hotter, which means you might want to lose some weight. Get into a bathing suit this year for the... Oh, we're not talking about women. Coming this Christmas from Bogus Industries. It's the I Can Drive Like Rick Sanchez board game. It's a real-life action adventure game that uses the streets of South Florida as a game board. Start begins at concession stand A of Joe Robbie Stadium, where each contestant has to drink himself to oblivion. Whoever gets the Highest blood alcohol level first goes on to level number two. They run down a pedestrian and haul ass home section of the game. Then leaves board game police battle, and each player must come up with a different excuse to go home and get his license. Then it's off to the final leg of the board game. Hire an attorney, go to court, and whoever gets off with the easiest sentence wins. It's hours of fun for the whole family. The I can drive. Like Rick Sanchez board game. Okay, here's the fact. Since all the comments that need to be made have been made. However, with regards to the media reporting, I found Channel 10 to be the least biased. Channel 7 in particular, Rick, I'm Cuban, you know Sanchez is absolutely the worst. Sadly, Channel 6 and Tony Cigaretto is a very close second when it comes to pandering to this militant mob. Channel 4, all we can say is... Boy. Also amazing when you study the Herald and Sun Sentinel papers in their slant. In today's Herald, an article pits date against Broward. 
And let me say it again, if you missed the beginning of the show, if you only subscribe to one of the two papers, or maybe you don't have any fish to wrap and look at either one, just look at yesterday's newspaper's front page of the front section. Here's the Sun Sentinel. Where the hell is it? Like I said, here, here it is. Dad and Alien reunited. Now, they do have the uh, secret to the uh, uh, INS woman uh, with the kid in the arms uh, bringing him out of the house. But then in the upper right-hand corner is the other picture of the father with the kid on his shoulder smiling. Dad and Alien reunited. That's their spin on it. That's the main uh, story. The Herald, in huge letters, seized. And they do have a small picture in the upper right-hand corner of the father with the kid. But... Uh, Raid returns Alien to Father, and of course, taking up almost half of the front page is the picture, the infamous AP picture. There's the uh, Border Patrol guy with a gun pointed in the general direction, and there's the, uh, the idiot in the closet with a little kid in his arms. The, the ever-present idiot, la idiota, in la closet. And there, of course, is a screaming, hysterical, Maris crazy ass underneath, just uh, for good measure on a herald. Yeah, you're right, Tom Fiedler, you really have drawn a fine line, baby. You guys really know how to do it. Not... I wonder how much uh, they're greasing the Al Newhart there at USA Today. It's always writing stuff about how the Herald is the most improved paper in the country and how great they've come back. And uh, I mean, they must be uh, smearing him with something, with chocolate Easter eggs or something. Here's a fact that says, uh, Dumb that is a house-cleaning maid, not a fisherman. Yeah. Why is he always holding and touching the kid, it asks. It says, Now Elion looks happy. The smile says it all. Castro is proud of the uh, family. <laughs> he sure is. He's saying, Nice going. I mean, he goes... Here's a mobile in Davy. Hello. Uh, Neil. Yes, sir. What heck? Neil. Yeah, I'm here. You cut out. Oh, okay. Welcome back. Thank you. Uh, one question that I have. What was that fisherman doing in the house at 5 o'clock in the morning? Oh, he hangs out there. He, he's he's part of the entourage. They have like like a traveling show, you know, like in a carnival. He's part of the whole entourage. He's always now, there. Let me, let me ask you a question. Do you think he's doing uh, Mary Crazies or uh, or what? Hey, if she ain't got better taste than that, uh, good luck to her, that bitch. Maybe that's why she's quiet all the time. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty. Of course, who the hell would do him? Anybody? No. Any takers out no. there? No. No. I don't think so. You know who he reminds me of? I hate to say this. He reminds me of a younger Stan. No. Wartimer. Oh. Oh. Doesn't he? Doesn't he look like him? I thought you were going to say I'm Major. Oh, you're yeah, Stan Major. Who? $50. Oh, that's Dan Major, yeah. Here's a mobile in Miami. Hello. Neil? Yes, sir. Yes, hi, good afternoon. Actually, a landline in Miami. Uh, just a couple comments. I mean, I know it's been rehashed and all that. Thank God for Janet Reno in the United States. Nice going there, Janet. Oh! And the United States finally standing up and not pandering and not bowing down and so forth. And right. So on. What an embarrassment. I mean, she gave him 85 million chances, and uh, the answer was always the same. No. Exactly. I mean, you can't you can't negotiate with those people. Now they want to go and meet the sun. Maybe they should be afforded a five-month wait yeah. before they can... Right. That's right. Good. Yeah, well, we'll, well, look at our appointment calendar. We'll give you a date. Exactly. Like sometime in late August might be good. That that, that fisherman, he's our version of Cato Kalin. It's unbelievable that, that that man is there. He's like your visa card. He is everywhere you want to be. And, and, and why why does the media keep interviewing this guy? Every time you turn around, he's having another press conference. Like yesterday, he's on there. I thought they were, he was going to bust a gut. That, 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 that girl, the cousin, she says that Janet Reno doesn't know what it's like to be a mother, nor does she. She's never uh, had children of her own. Oh, but she's a surrogate mama. She is and a Believe mama. me, if you've watched her actions these last few months, she's a mother. I think most would agree. She's oh, a I, real mother. I agree. Which is only a half a word in her case. My predictions are that these people are going to make a lot of money. Yep. Off of this, if not books, including the fishermen. Mm -hmm. And this young lady, not to be sarcastic or funny or anything like that, she may one day pose in Playboy. You never know. What a grotesque thought. But that is the case. These people are going to get rich off of this at the uh, Dade County expense of over a million dollars. Right, in, that's correct. In, in, in police salaries. Uh, the police did a fine job in keeping these people in control. And what a shame, though, that uh, 35 blocks is, I think, what they reported made it sound like all Dade County was on fire. You know, the media, the way that they, yeah. like, you know, portrayed and so forth. That it makes it a few, sound... uh, the few tires in a dumpster burning in the middle of uh, that one intersection at 27th and uh, Flagler. And uh, they acted like the whole city was on fire. You're right. You're not kidding. And thanks, Neil, for letting us be a voice, at least, you know, for some of us to be heard. Okay, have we a great appreciate day. It. Have a great day. Sir. Thanks. Bye-bye. 567 oh, 560 We're getting a lot of good calls today. People are living in the breathing and thinking callers. I'm very distressed over Erasmus's uh, two-page fax there because he kind of comes out of the closet as a 
professional Cuban, which uh, I just I just don't know what to say to people who, don't, who can't relate to the rest of us who just who just refuse to be obsessed with these things any more than I'm obsessed with Israel or obsessed with uh, anything else. If you've got a personal obsession about something, fine, but don't, maybe not so fine. Maybe get some help. Or maybe just get a life. But don't try to force everybody else uh, to share it. Don't try to impose it on everybody else. I'm not going to go on the whole soapbox thing. It's been said. I've said it a billion times in the last 20 years. I, I don't see anything going to change. As long as you've got all these goddamn grandstanding, and there's so many of them, between the attorneys and the leaders, the self-appointed leaders of all these organizations, and you can't even keep track anymore. It was the attorney du jour, the uh, leader du jour every day. And then, the, of course, the crazy guy with a watch band scratch on his head in the turban. Here's Kendall. Hello. Hi, Neil. How you doing? Great. Welcome back. Yes, sir. You had a fax uh, from a gentleman who said something about additional pictures which were not published. Right. Okay, last night, CNN newsstand showed him real quickly. And uh, the fisherman, when he came out to the news conference, said how that gentleman, the guard, you know, the uh, police officer, right. tore the kid from his hands. Totally untrue. In yeah. the sequence of pictures that was shown last night, the uh, officer put his gun down. Uh, the fisherman took the kid and handed the kid to the INS agent, the right. female agent. Mm -hmm. The other guy, the other police officer, never tore the kid. The other police officer never even touched the kid. Right. So uh, he came out and saying how it was torn out of his hands. Let the Cuban community know. He's a traitor to the Cuban community. Uh, he, 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 he gave the kid to the woman free and clear. Uh -huh. And the gun was down already at that point. So he lied through his teeth at the news conference. Well, just like, the, just like the fact says, if that whole thing with the photo opportunity wasn't orchestrated, he wouldn't have been in a closet with a door open. He would have been in a closet with the door closed. He would have been hiding. <laughs> That's right. But the, but the point is, let, uh, let everybody know, and the Herald refuses to publish a sequence of pictures where the gun was immediately put down the female officer came into the room, and Daryl, the fisherman, went out and handed the kid with both hands to the female officer. Nothing was dragged out of his hands whatsoever, and that was shown last night on CNN newsstand for the entire nation to see. So Daryl is nothing but a big liar like Mary Lacey. Okay, thanks. Bye. And Donato, too. What? Well, I mean, Donato Dalrymple, what kind, what kind of a name is that? What? Are you starting with the goddamn Dagos again? You're forgetting where we get most of our free food from, mister. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, you better reconfuse. Plus, Al Falcone was just in here, too, with the free pizzas for you and all kinds oh, of... Oh, like, so I love our Italian it. friends. Yeah. Speaking of that, by the way, Doris Italian Markets has got five great locations that you'll love shopping at, just like I do. That's right. I love my Italian friends. Sunrise, Plantation, Hollywood, Coral Springs, and West Boca. In fact, just like they said in Godfather 2, the Italian people are wonderful people. Remember that, Senator? Here's my offer, Senator. My well, forget about that. Anyway, you're going to love shopping at Doris Markets. Bang you in the butt, honey. I got to get out of this game. If it's the last thing I ever do. Yes. I got to get out of this gig. I used to be a star. I'm talking TV and movies. DJ Hooker. Emergency 911. You like Star Trek, right? Scotty, beam me up from this nightmare gig. I'll admit it. I got the call from my agent about this Priceline.com thing when things weren't going too well. No way. Things weren't going at all. So he says, Bill, you want to do a few commercials? They'll pay you a ton of money. So I said, sure. It went so well. They said, hey, Bill, you want to do it on TV? And I said, what do I sign? I'm back on TV, baby. I'm going to be a star again. I'll be big. Really big. And then I realized all the TV spots are making fun of that really awful album I made back in the 60s. I'm a parody of myself. I went out. But my agent says, I already signed the contract. You're stuck, he says. I gotta get up of this gig. Girl, I'll have a better life if I do. Thank you. Thank you. It's a 144 at 560 WQM. By the way, his wife <laughs> is still dead. Here's uh, the latest on our poll today. Our question, who is the biggest asshole of this bunch? Donato Dalrymple, the fisherman, is uh, still just barely in the lead. This is going to be a tough battle, I told you. 104 votes, 45.8%. But right on his ass Rectum. is Maris Crazy Ass Gonzalez with 101, only three votes in the behind, 44.4%. And way, way in the uh, third is Lazaro with only 22 votes, 9.6%. So it's between Donato, the fisherman, and Maris Crazy Ass. Neck and neck, nose to nose. And God knows what else. Although I have a fax here that says, uh-uh. At any rate, last the Beasley trade, 8 and 1 8 pretty weak. Also, the uh, NASDAQ is in the toilet. Even the Dow has turned negative now. As the people continue losing our money for us like it's going out of style. They can't print it fast enough. 
Oh, I see. Nobody's doing Mary's crazy ass Lazarus said so. Eric has got that on the thing here. Also, ask George about the Senora Senorita thing that happened on the news last week. Somebody referred to her as Senora, and Lazaro jumped in and uh, had to correct them because Senora implies married or right. at least not a virgin. So he said, no, 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 Senorita, she's pure. He actually said that, or words to that effect. So maybe it was her on the mirror and not the Virgin Mary. Maybe it was a different virgin. You think that might be it? Uh -huh. Yeah, she's a virgin, right. Oh, I guess that, uh, well, we already had that one poll. If you do it in the rectum, then you're still a virgin, so I guess, yeah. How many of the women who supported Elian remaining with the Miami relatives would be willing to turn one of their children over to be raised by this family of wackos? Is another fact here? I don't think too many. Diane in Key Largo says, I'm having a hard time deciding who the biggest asshole or the most unbalanced one, so I'll register half a vote each for Donato and Maris Gracia. See, she's got it right. Also, here's an interesting fact. It says, I wonder who will be paying for Dade County employees and Miami City employees to be off work tomorrow. Will they be Dr. Day's pay? How do you like that? <laughs> Inquiring minds want to know. Will the taxpayers be paying for uh, people to hang out and uh, have a day of protest? New words as per Maris Lazy Ass, Shile. As in... I've been caring for this child for uh, nego negotiate. She said that like three times. Bloodsheds. Eat brains. Now maybe she's got that confused with Schmidt for brains, which is what she's got. And then change, as in somebody's feeling the change, and it ain't the fisherman. Okay, let's uh, do Miami. Hello. Hello? Yes, sir. How you doing? Okay. Okay. Uh, listen, <laughs> I've just been having a good time listening to this stuff. You did a great job this morning on your monologue. I wish that was on tape for I know everybody. It. You're always great. Isn't uh, it great that we have CNN International, so I didn't miss a thing over there in Amsterdam, and being six hours ahead, I had the uh, leg up, so to speak, on everybody else? I got uh, just a few things here. I just want to let you know that my fax was running hot today with my resume is going out <laughs> anywhere but here. Right. <laughs> Can't blame you for that. Uh, but I, I didn't... I watched, I've been watching this from the get-go but on uh, Friday night they were still talking and Saturday morning I left early and when I was eating breakfast up in Lauderdale somebody said they got the kid and I thought they were pulling my leg he mm -hmm. said no 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 they went in and got the kid so anyway I stayed busy the whole day I got back and watched the 10 o'clock news or whatever and I was I was just amazed at everything and I just want to make a few comments and that is as far as that gun goes that gun in that picture is not even pointed at them it's pointed to the side right and the guy has his hand not on the trigger, but outside the trigger guard. Right. And you had made mention of that earlier today and stuff. And the fisherman, I about died when I saw that the fisherman was at the house at like 4.30 or 5 in the morning. Right. He just, he just never goes away. He's always there. He was on the plane when they went, when they slept up there to chase after the kid on the plane to Washington. There he was, right next to Lazaro. And then I'm thinking that, okay, maybe this thing's over. Then they say, no, the family's going up there. They've had that kid for four or five months. The father's had him for two hours. Right. And they're already on their way up there. They want to see the kid. No way. They shouldn't let them see that kid for, like, like somebody else said, like four or five months. Yeah, uh, yeah, equal time, I equal say. Time. If, if the Turn appeal, if the appeal thing drags on that long, I say a four or five months sounds very reasonable. Oh, man, I tell you. I just, and then when I saw the uh, whatever the guy's name is with the Democratia movement, oh, I about died on that mm -hmm. one. I mean, I'm not really for this violence, but I am so sick of them getting their way. And, and the one I... thing Cubans do not understand, most of them, is the word no. This is a decision. Now, let me, let me ask you this. What, 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 what kind of an injury would you have to sustain? Even, even if he did get the butt of a, uh, a, a rifle in the head, what kind of an injury would you have to have to have your whole head surrounded with a turban like he was going to become a mummy or something? <laughs> well, what is that? I don't know. I, I could say I, it just seemed like that finally the governments did what they should have done. Amen. And, they, and that was, the, like, you, like you said, that's the only way they could do it. They can't wait till there's a thousand people there. They have to do it where you get in, you get out. Nobody got hurt. Even the police uh, uh, guy from the city of Miami even said that it was a good operation because nobody got hurt. It was in, it was out. You're not going to sit there and have a debate with those people at that time. Right. You got orders to go yeah, in. You, you do it kids. fast and forceful and three minutes and goodbye, and that it, was the end of it. Exactly. And it was it's beautiful. Like you couldn't and say, would you please give me the kid? Well, how about if I wait five minutes? Would you give them to me? Then You just say what you're in there for. You get them. You go. Everybody. And, and, and you see, shocked. these, these oh. apologists for the family who are saying, well, you know, we expect to see this in communist Cuba. I guarantee in communist Cuba, there wouldn't have been any AP photographer allowed to be in the house, and then he wouldn't have been allowed to snap the pictures, and 
and whoever would have been in a position of authority wouldn't have said, don't interfere with the photographer and uh, we'll, we'll deal with it. Exactly, because you can tell that photographer obviously is what? A foot or two or three away from the... From, right. From the they could have snatched the camera from the guy and busted it That's or taken correct. the film. That's correct. And Janet, Janet, I don't know if you heard that. the story earlier, but Janet Reno gave him specific orders, exactly. don't interfere with the photographer. But I'm saying it wasn't like it was... You know, if they wanted to have gotten the film, it wasn't like, oh, they, they did a poor job, they forgot to get it. They right. just, like you said, they just let, let them have it. That's right. Anyway, you're doing a great job. I wish that I was as articulate as you are. I hope someday maybe you'll, that this, you know, that you'll kind of speak up about this kind of stuff, you know, uh, hopefully even further. Uh, I mean, like I say, down here, it's it's such a monopoly of the Spanish, and, and not all of them see it the way that, that that consensus group does. But I'll tell you, it's miserable for those that are not... Uh, party to any of that stuff down here. I know. I've lived it a long time. Have a great day, pal. 40 years. Okay. Thanks. Bye. It's 151 at 560 WK. Your station for all South Florida sports is Sports Radio 560 QAM. Regresa Canadá, Jodio Bastardo. If you're taking your vacation in the Middle East this summer, don't miss the new Iranian amusement park, Six Turbans over Tehran. At Six Turbans, you can go on a full-scale Iraq attack, suffer through a skyjack, or ride the Ayatollah, the 200-mile-an-hour roller coaster that changes directions for no apparent reason. Test your terrorism skills on the midway. Blow up an actual bus full of people at Grenade Lock. Visit the flagellation station and whack yourself on the head 12 times for just a buck. Then tap your toes to the tunes of third world country music's biggest stars like Kumini Pearl. Save your appetite for the smoked salmon rusty. Try it on a bagel. Get ready for 444 days of thrills and kills. Visit Six Turbans over Tehran. It'll scare the Shiite out of you. I know who can be one of them right now. Oh. Let's hear it for Ramon. What do you say? <laughs> Here is the West Palm Beach. Hello. Hey, how's it going? Great. Uh, I got a few things. You know, the, the government was very meticulous in what they did. Yeah. They, You know, they were in and out and boom, boom, boom. Uh, you know, it's funny, the family is saying, you know, hey, you know, they, we didn't have any guns, you know. Well, they didn't know that, you know. They heard that you guys, you know, they're like, you know, the government said that they thought they had guns. They heard there was people that said they had guns there. And they also had the security guy there who was uh, exactly. always seen walking around with a gun strapped to his ankle. Exactly. So. so, you know, the government didn't know. Okay, they're going in there thinking there's going to be guns. Right. Uh, the other thing is also, did you see the lawyer for the family, the scowl on his face? Uh, Which one? They've only got uh, Ken Kendall Coffee. Yeah, that yeah, that, that was the one. Yeah. He had the press conference right before Janet Reno. Mm -hmm. Every time he said something, he had the uh, he had the scowl on his face. Okay, that was one. Two. Uh, the guy from NBC that went around the house. It was NBC, right? From right. MSNBC. Was that the guy who went around the house on a tour, showing all the stuff that had happened? I, I don't know. I, there were so many of mine, I can't even separate them. But the worst. Yeah. Was yesterday. I was listening to ESPN Radio. The guy from the Herald that does the morning show for, on on Sundays yeah. said it was oh, so... Oh, Dan, Dan LeBasso? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the best. He said things are so bad down here. Well, you know, they really weren't. He was on a phone saying they were so bad down here. Instead of being in a studio, right. he could have been. He could have done that. He was on a phone saying it was bad, and he went out a rant saying the government was bad, and how his grandparents cry about certain things. You know, and I'm thinking to myself, I don't have to be hearing this. I but but that, that's the same guy. Dan LeBaster is the same guy when the Marlins won the World Series in 97 who wrote that obnoxious article yeah. about, oh, well, yeah, uh, I didn't feel like uh, the Miami had anything to do with the Cubans no, he, won the he, series he because know. Levon. He didn't know. But the, the best, the ultimate, was when they showed pictures of him smiling with the father. They asked some guy on the... Uh, in the crowd, and he said, "Well, his mother taught him to be like that, you know, saying it's the mother." Meanwhile, you know, this whole this whole thing just turned out to be a big mess for the Cubans, and the government did the right thing. Okay, all right, you take it easy. Thanks a lot. So, Mama taught him to smile like that, like on command, I guess, or maybe they have him brainwashed now. Maybe on the plane flying up there, they had somebody, you know, brainwashing working on him. What was that, Plato? Repeat. Here's a Tamarack. Hello. Hey Neil, how are you today? Okay. Uh, just one quick thing. Um, you know, I'm not surprised by anything that uh, some of the politicians like Diaz Balart and Ileana Ross Layton and say, although I wish some media person would just simply ask them one question and say, well, well while you're talking bad about Clinton and Reno, if that was your boy, wouldn't you have something nice to say about him? And, you know, it doesn't surprise me what, what they're saying, but 
What surprises me a lot is, is Bob Graham. Oh, I mean, what an asshole he is, man. Just the worst. Let me tell you something. I can't believe this guy would be doing this. Um, several years ago, I'm, a, I'm of Armenian descent, mm -hmm. and Bob Dole, of all people, was introducing a bill in the Senate to recognize the genocide of the Armenians. And just to put a day aside and recognize it. Mm -hmm. So I wrote a letter to Bob Graham, who has a Miami office, and delivered it to him. And I said, you know, I'm Armenian, and this was a great human atrocity during World War One. And I hope you, I hope I, I can count on you for your support. And I can guess his answer was no. His answer was. Turkey is too strong of an ally of us now that we can't, I can't vote for it. Yeah. And it ended up being filibustered by the Senate. Now, this same guy, you know, a guy, a, oh, the kid just has the right to yeah, be with his father. There's, there's no Turkish yep. constituency here, you got to understand. There's no Armenians to, uh, have a great day, pal. All right, Neil. Just remember, Turkey's his middle name. <laughs> there you go. See ya. Okay, we got to get out of here. got to get out of this place like uh, what Bill, whatever his name was, said. It's it's unbelievable, you know. It's just it's just astonishing. It's like I just came back yesterday on a plane, and it's like we never missed a beat. It just continues on and on, and will it ever end? The Neil Rogers Show on 560 like said, WQAM, oh. Miami, Fort Lauderdale.